I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. That looked there good. Go. 123 episodes. <laughs> We're yeah, still we're working on clapping. <laughs> yeah, we've we've used money from this podcast to buy a useless fucking uh, ghost talking tool. It's a professional piece of equipment, John. Yeah, I actually have stuff to talk about with that this episode too. <laughs> so, um, before we begin, though, so I've I've been doing ex- I've been exercising and being healthy again. Nerd. Um. Yeah, I know, right? Because like. I don't actually remember the reason why. I well, actually, no. I remember the reason why. My psychiatrist told me, John, you need to start exercising to try and deal with the tiredness that you have. Yeah. Um. So I started exercising, and <laughs> due to the fact I'm yawning right now, it's not like super effective. But I just keep on. I just keep on doing it because I know that it's good for me. Um. But I, I started to do uh, my bodyweight fitness routine again after yeah. four years. And I did it on f- Friday, I think. Uh-huh. That's, no, I did it on Thursday because it was, it was sh- no, Friday, Friday. It was, now I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> I did it on one of those two days, right? Yeah. Um, and Brandon, <laughs> my arms still hurt. <laughs> oh you know what it's an it's the, an hour long workout and my arms still hurt because i had to do pull-ups and l-sits where did you do pull-ups push-ups. do all those things in the door i do I oh do. okay yeah so so now like right at the you know where the the arm the bicep meets the elbow yeah yeah that that spot is in constant burning pain for me right now that reminds like, so I, I'm gonna start exercising again. It, you know, it's difficult with the kid and also being uh, choosing to be lazy. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm trying to figure out how the fuck because I used to do a shit ton of kettlebells. I'm trying to figure yeah. out. I can't really do them in the house because I have a toddler. Yeah, that's not great. It, it's yeah, you can't really swing kettlebells with a toddler. So I'm trying to figure out where I might have to like clean out a spot in my shed. Because I'm too self-conscious oh, you, to do them in my backyard. <laughs> do you have a your 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 garage is like empty, or do you have car in there now? I have car, but I can just move car out. Yeah, well, but also that's a good could, idea. Could, I'll just move car. Yeah, out. and then yeah, I've got like all, so many so much room for activities. You have room, exactly. <laughs> you have room for activities. You're a genius. You move the car out. I think I'll I think I'll move the car out. I, that's the easiest way to prevent killing a a child too. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure they're not behind the car when moving it out. That too. That's very important. That so Unf- last, <laughs> last, last night I watched um, Terrifier because Terrifier two came out and it looks good, but I wanted to see Terrifier one first. It, it, Terrifier's it's the one with the clown, so good. right? Yeah, it's with the the clown with the white face, and and uh. I had an issue with the. My, I have one issue with the movie, and. So there's a scene where, like, he ties somebody, he's hanging someone by their feet from a rafter, and he, yeah, their friend is also tied up in the room, and he cuts them okay. in half long ways from the crotch down through the head, using, like, a, uh, uh using a handsaw. Um, okay. But their- That sounds super hard. Their, their friend, it's, oh, it's all, it's a slasher with, like, it was a, it was a low budget slasher that got popular, and it has a real, yeah, lot of, yeah. like, practical effects that are, like, super great. Um, okay, but her friend breaks out of the knots that were binding her and runs away. Yeah, and it it's been bothering me, and I don't know why I'm so hung up on it. How can you tie a knot so well you can suspend someone from the ceiling and cut them in half long ways, but then also tie a knot so bad that like their friend who's not really struggling that hard, like because it's they're sitting, she's sitting there, and then like the rope just magically falls off her wrists, kind of. Oh, like how can you be both so good and so bad at tying knots? And that's really my only uh, issue with the movie. 
I have the answer, Brandon. What's that? Did the did the terrifier clown chase after the friend after the person who got free? He chases after everybody. That's but like his did deal. Did he? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he did it on purpose. Oh, and then there's the best fucking scene in the movie. So like getting caught in half. Also, there's boobs. It's great. They get caught in half. Well, I mean, it's a horror movie, so it's it's a slasher. Like like, a- like, like it, if it's a slasher, you're probably getting booby. Like it's it, it just a statement all of fact. The boxes. And the funniest kill in the whole fucking thing. So he's like, ah, I'm a stabby clown boy. Stab, 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 stab. And the person's like, no! And, like, tries to run. And then he just pulls out a gun and shoots them. <laughs> like, imagine. The, the, clown <laughs> the clown pulls it out? The clown pulls out a gun. Also, this movie's, like, old. So, like, spoilers. It's not that that's old. On you. 2016. It's, it's over five years. Like, if you are going to see it, okay, you would have seen it. It's free on Am- Amazon right now. That's why I watched it. But it's so funny gotcha. watching someone, like, run away from being stabbed, and then they just get shot. <laughs> okay. So, I was looking up Terrifier, because I was looking up their kills. Yeah. Uh, like, because you know how there's the kills wookie? Yeah. So, I typed in K- Terrifier Killer. Yeah. Uh, and then I was going to back back up on Killer to Kills. The Killer is Art, Art the Clown. But... But Brandon, yeah. The second most searched term about this movie, yeah, is "terrifier" based on a true story. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Why would anyone think oh, that? God. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. That's amazing. That's that's just fucking hilarious. What, in what reality, uh... He, like, writes his, it opens with him, like, writing his name in shit on, like, a bathroom and getting chased out of, like, a pizzeria, and then he just goes back and murders the people in the pizzeria. I mean, how many total kills did he get? Let's see. One sec. I don't know, it's probably, let's like, Let's see how nine. many kills he got. I'm gonna guess nine. That's pretty decent numbers for, uh, a movie killer. Oh, yeah. this is not a great. This is not a great one. Whatever. Um. What should we call it? Uh. Oh, VHS ninety nine's out. By the way. Oh, I'll have to watch that. There's a new VHS movie, and um, the only one that's like, in my opinion, not like complete aces, is the first one. Um, gotcha. But it okay, has so one of the. St- it ha- it has one of the single funniest scenes at a uh, it has the second funniest scene in the VHS movie quadrilogy yeah. quintilogy i think it's a quintilogy now i think this is the fifth movie yeah um uh after the the from VHS 2 the scene where the the demon pokes its head over the car and says papa <laughs> which is the funniest scene in any any horror movie ever um as just a rule I but, still can't get over how the VHS people are responsible for that um, one cryptid video that I'm drawing a blank on in California. Uh, the, the something woods. We talked about it. It yeah. was, um, I think it was on Baja Beasts. It's yeah, the, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. like something mountain monster. The <clears throat> yeah. uh, Van Meter mountain monster. Van Meter, I think maybe. Was I don't that think it? it was Van Meter, but it's close. Um, one second. Do, 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 I don't know. Do, 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 do. I'd have to look up the copy. Yeah, I think it's the Van Meter, but I could be wrong. I think you're right with the Baja Beasts. But I think it was Baja Beasts for sure, because it was because I remember I was trying to do that episode for a while. It was uh, episode ninety three. There we go. The Black Demon, the Lone Pine Mountain Devil, and Oofty Goofty. I forgot I did Oofty Goofty. Uh, I think no, it was the Lone Pine the Mountain then. Devil. That was the VHS Lone Pine? people. I, I want to say it was that Lone might Pine. be it. That might be it. I think you're right. Because because I remember it, there was like a priest or something. Yeah, the priest was just also happened to be the name of the guy from VHS, and then like all of these dots <laughs> started. All of the dots were connecting. Yeah, 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 yeah. First sighting Native American times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cryptid wiki. <laughs> Oh, Cratchit Licky. Uh, Do they mean pre-colonial? I, I don't know what that means. I, that has to mean pre-colonial. 
I, I, I can only assume, yeah, 37 sit, yeah, Father Justice Martinez, yeah, and then yeah. I, I remember looking for that and, like, trying to find a record of that, and I couldn't, and I was just like, fuck it, I'm not gonna deal with this episode, and then I moved on. Yeah, because um, there was no record for it. <laughs> yeah, because there's no record, yeah. Well, because I, see, the problem is I try to believe that people are acting in good faith for as long as I can until I can't, um, yeah, which is important. Um, but it's Halloween, Brandon. Well, it's spooky. It's times. Halloween in seven days from when we yeah. release this. Um, so Brandon, I was like really wanting to do like so. Full disclosure. All right. Uh, back at the start of the year, uh, I had the intention of doing Slender Man for Halloween this year. Um, because. Of all of the cryptids we could cover, there's at least one verifiable death associated with Slender... Or not death, but uh, near-fatal incident involving Slender Man. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of creepy in its own right, just, like, on the surface. And that's why I was, like, doing the Dybbuk Box, uh, uh, Kuchisaka Ona, and a bunch of stuff like that at the start of the year. Because I was like, I want to go over some, like, you know, whatever... And then I got distracted. Then I forgot to buy the book to read for Slender Man. You know, that's just, it's just the stuff that happens, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I want to do a spooky one for, for Halloween, right? So I'm like, let's do the Bell Witch. And then I realized that there's like four books about the Bell Witch. And like, it's just a comp- convoluted story. And I didn't have the desire to untangle it in time for Halloween. So I skipped that. Uh, then there's the Watcher of 657 boulevard which at first i What's thought might that? have been spooky okay so have you heard so there's a netflix series about it right yeah um, it's about a family that moves into westfield new jersey which is like rich fucking yeah. white 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 um like the whitest white new jersey has to offer yeah uh and they they got like a 1.3 million dollar house or something like that and Within two days of the purchase, they received an e- uh, a letter. Um, and the oh, letter was the like letters talking- guy? Yeah, yeah. They they sent like four letters or something, yeah. or three letters, and like they named off the kids and a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. Right? I think there was a last um, podcast on this. I think that's why there's a bell like ringing. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think there was one. Um, I was starting to do it, and then I was like, "This is too true crime," and also. I'm like 90% sure that somebody else wanted to get that house at a cheaper rate. So they started fucking with the other fa- with a family. Like oh, that just seems like the most yeah. likely thing to me. Um, but in, but instead, Brandon, I was then uh, looking for books that I have. I have two books about the uh, paranormal in new England, right? Yeah. I have no idea where the fuck they went. I literally oh, looked everywhere in my house to find them. Um, so I was like, Fuck. I'm out of ideas. And then, and then, Brandon, I saw, I saw a blue binded book sitting on my shelf, soft cover, with weird spooky handwriting on it. Yeah. Hudson Valley Haunts, (laughs) which I had bought ages ago, like probably close to a decade ago, and I barely read it, right? Um... I more bought it just to look through and, like, leaf through it and see what was there. Yeah. So, um, now, we've talked about this, right? We've talked about the Hudson Valley. We've talked about ghosts in the Hudson Valley. There's, like, I really want to do one that's just Uptown Kingston before Uptown Kingston is just completely turned into gentrification and gone. (laughs) Um, It was weird driving. I had to go to my parents' house, and we are looking around. We're like, none of these people are from King. Like, you could tell by, like, look... It was the craziest thing. Well, because there's a bunch of cool stories. Because, like, Uptown, I don't know how how consistent it is anymore because I haven't been there in fucking forever. But Uptown used to have a bunch of, like, old shit. And, like, you know, there's the... There's, there's still the, old uh, shit. There's Senate House and the Old Dutch Church. Yeah. And, and, well, yeah. the Old Dutch Church has the, like, legend about the demon in the steeple and, like, yeah. the 13 appearing and all that kind of stuff. So there's, like, there's like interesting that- stories to talk about. There's an interesting story, just so people know, like, that's just how clock faces were for a period of time. Like, that wasn't to keep a demon out there. They just had a 13. I forget the reason why, but, like, there's a period of history where, like, that's just how they numbered all clocks. That's weird. But, 
Um, but anywho, so I was I was leafing through it. And I'm like, okay, I think I can I can cobble an episode together out of this, right? Yeah. Um, so I I had the the thought. All right, I'll do Ulster County because you and I live in Ulster County. Um, and like you know that's our backyard because we talk about Kingston all the time. So I'm like, yeah. no one's gonna fucking. Like it's not gonna give our our location away anymore. Although I'm probably gonna give my location away way more in this episode. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I was leafing through it, and the first one was like in Rhinebeck, and I'm like, no one wants to hear about Rhinebeck. No one wants a fancy ghost. No one wants a fancy ghost, right? Um, so the next one was de- de- decidedly more our speed because it was Napanock, which yeah. is like just outside of Ellenville, which is. A place in upstate New York. If if you're from the city, it's upstate New York. For us, it's just New York, but whatever. Um, but I found out about a place that I've never heard of before. Uh, I don't know how I never heard of it before uh, because I've driven by it multiple times. Um, but it was called the Shan- it's called the Shanley Hotel, not the Stanley, not the, the Shanley. Stanley. Very important. Not the Stanley. Not the Stephen Kubrick, uh, like, um, the Shining Hotel. That one's different. That it's one's different. very different. I very never different. heard of this place. And, and, like, I also have driven past it a bunch. I've been at the Dunkin' Donuts right next to it a number of times. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. like, 10, 15 minutes from where we went to high school. It is. It is. I looked it up, Brandon. It's literally six Google Map directions away from where we went to high school. Yeah. I've like, never like, heard of I'm it. I'm talking about turns, right? Yeah. Six turns. And one of those turns is to turn into the place. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> um, and here's, here's why I'm so, so surprised I never heard of it. We had kids who liked ghost hunting in our high school, mm-hmm. and they gave their, um, I forget the name, of the, like, not the Regents Project, but... Wh- oh, yeah, it was uh, their WISE Project was ghost the hunting. The WISE Project, yeah. Their WISE Project was ghost hunting. I've never heard of this, and it's, like, supposedly the most haunted whatever, and it's yeah. six turns away. <laughs> yeah, it, it's literally, it's literally so close that it wouldn't have been unusual to ride a bike there because it would only take like two hours by bike at most yeah because keep in mind this is all 55 zones so right um but but still right like how we didn't know about this is boggling to me because also i watched i i fucking i i wore a tap shirt uh, in ninth grade with a fucking Naruto headband yeah. to go, well, like, for my last ghost hunt, like, my last Halloween, yeah. I went as a ninja ghost hunter. Yeah. Because I just wanted candy, and I didn't feel like dressing up. Yeah. And then, of course, I it turned, like, you know, I got to college, and then the whole thing flipped. The, the script flipped. Now co- costumes are fun, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But but I, I found this, and for this week's episode, I really wanted to cover it, right? Um, I wanted to actually have it be, like, a sampler of ghost hauntings. But I, I started digging into this episode, and it just, like, was a lot. <laughs> it's I see there's a 17-page um, copy in front of me. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Um, so... The thing that inspired this episode was uh, Hudson Valley Haunts, as I mentioned before, by Linda Zimmerman. Um, And my... Okay. So I did something a little bit different this episode. Um, I wrote the copy initially based on the Shanley Hotel's own telling of their history. Right? Um, then, Then I scoured Daily Freeman articles, which is a local paper, um... For literally any information I could find about the Shanley Hotel. Um, So anything that's verifiable in their history, I mention. Everything (laughs) that I don't mention is not verifiable at this time. So uh, we're kind of just going on what they say. And well, we I don't think that it's a great idea. No, Um. So, I'm also using personal knowledge of the region, you know, all that good stuff. 
Um, but but I also want to point something out. Uh, so there is a trigger warning on this episode. Um, there is talk of child death. Did at least four. That we've already talked about that. <laughs> Yeah, we well, but I I mean it's a trigger warning, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not it's it's oh, so no, I was people making they, a joke about like with the kettlebells. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't even think of that. Um, so uh, there's also talk of uh, self harm and suicide, um, and it's ghosts. So like anything macabre or death related would be included as well, just to get people like who are. You know that's their thing like you know if that's anything that like is a problem just like let like know that it's it's going to show up um but let's get into the episode now so welcome Brandon, to cryptopedia <laughs> yeah welcome to Chris- cryptopedia i forgot that that's even a thing brandon i am so excited to talk about this episode i i'm forgetting even our things welcome to crypt uh, spooktober cryptopedia uh you were the so podcast. excited. You were posting I, this into the Discord bef- like a week before we recorded it. Brandon, I did. I usually don't spoil what I'm going to cover, but I needed to post it. <laughs> it was so much. So I posted it as spoiler content to the Discord and censored <laughs> out the name of the hotel because I didn't want people to like get spoilers. But it was just, it was so amazingly terrible that I needed to talk about it. It needed to leave me. I texted you about it you because did. I needed to not have it in my brain the, alone. The vessel that is John could not handle the pressure. <laughs> it needed to be let loose. This is this this is like amazing. Okay? And it's amazing in not the like it's believable in any way shape or form. It's amazing in the Jesus Christ what is happening here for him. Um, but yeah, we're Cryptopedia. I'm John. I'm Brandon. Uh, and, uh, we're talking about ghosts. We're talking about hauntings in particular. Spooktober. Um, yeah, Spooktober. And, uh, we're, we're going to the old Ulster County, which is where we are right now. Uh, and for reference, Ulster County takes... (laughs) (laughs) We're professionals. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm very professional. I burped away from the mic at least. You I did. did you I did. did turn ar- away turned. from it. I did do a head turn. Um, <laughs> so, the Hudson Valley, uh, for those of you who don't know, which is where Ulster County is located, uh, they take go- they take Halloween pretty fucking seriously out here. We love it. Um, yeah, we do. Uh, it, it's also like, if we're talking about places in the country that have uh, teenager with teenagers with anger problems that are running haunted houses. I think the Hudson Valley's leading. They very like you know my very much my so. neighbors directly across mm-hmm. the street from me, they're the ones that own the head well their cousin is the headless horseman guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and like that's just the way it is up here. Apples and angry and, and angst about Halloween. Apples and angst. Um, yeah, pretty much. AA up here. Yeah. Um, which is also <laughs> not inaccurate either. <laughs> it's very accurate, actually. <laughs> um, Alcohol, apples, this, and angst. It's all you need. Yeah, triple A. And you're going to need it for the potholes in Kingston. Oh, Lord, yeah. Um, there, so, oh. anywho. I, the, I, the I, I was going to complain about, the, the, about specific streets, but I refrained. That's fair. But, oh, That's Jesus. Fair. It's getting bad. Yeah, they're bad. It's bad. It's, it's getting worse. Um, so, uh, for those of you who don't know, Ulster County is bordered on the east by the Hudson River, which is a famous river in New York. Um, and it's considered upstate by New York City people. And by anyone who lives in the area, they're like, no, that's not upstate. Past Albany is upstate. And that's the truth. Yeah. Past Albany is fucking upstate. Um, Albany's already borderline upstate. Um, in terms of like the current population of this Dutch settled county, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it clocks in around a hundred and eighty-one thousand people. Uh, it's pretty blindingly white, which is unsurprising. Yeah. Uh, give it in, you know, it's Dutch settled. Uh, but we're only seventy-five percent of the population. Turns out, 
which is better than some of the places we've covered on this this podcast. That, that's it, way better than some of the places that we covered. Yes. It's not great, but it's better. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so, noteworthy, and I'm going to put this in quotes, cities. Uh, well, actually, the only city in Ulster County is Kingston. Everything else is a town. Um, it's Poughkeepsie? Out. No, that's Duchess, isn't it? That's Duchess. That's oh. Duchess. Um, so, so Kingston, of course, um, is the one that we talk about a lot. It was the former seat of the county in the original capital of New York State. And that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone who grew up in Kingston knew, can rattle that fact off because they teach us a fuck ton about Kingston history. Um, and the uh, the other super noteworthy town in uh, Ulster County is New Paltz, um, which was made famous by its mayor, Jason West, who married 25 same-sex couples in 2004, um, which is a pretty big deal. If I, my memory is correct, I think it was like the first... That was the first time that that was like, ha- like a state, like a, a, a town official, like ratified that. I think huh. I can't remember. Um, it was a big deal. I remember it being a huge deal when we were in high s- when we were in like that wouldn't even be high school. That'd be middle school. Yeah, that'd be middle. Yeah, yeah. I remember that being a huge deal. Um, because it is. But anyway. Yeah. Also, uh, it's the home of the town of Woodstock. And now, Brandon, as somebody who works in Woodstock, (laughs) um, you know as well as I know uh, that that's nowhere near where the original Woodstock Festival happened. Woodstock happened absolutely no. It was at Bethel Wood. That shit's so far away. (laughs) It's an hour and a half away from Woodstock, just for reference. It's not even in Ulster County. Yeah. Um, I think it's like... No, Green's on the other side. I don't remember the name of the county. That That's... Once you get past that part of the border... Like, once you get past the Catskills in Ulster County, it's just like... It's no man's land. I have no idea what the names of any of the places out there are. No. Um. However, that being said, uh, it's actually relative... Like, Woodstock is actually close to where they held Woodstock 94, which was in Saugerties, so, which is only 17 the minutes The worst away. Woodstock. Mmm... I'd say 99's the worst Woodstock. Oh, yeah. yeah you got that. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because, because, like, Woodstock 94 was just muddy. Yeah. Woodstock 99 uh, was on a military base and involved exploding, uh, exploding, uh, uh, trucks. See, that sounds like a so, party, though. Yeah. Oh, it was. Uh, but it was, it was not great. Um, also, as a as an aside, Brandon, the my childhood home, the one yeah. that you never saw because I was in Kingston, uh, the shed was built out of wood from Woodstock '94. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. Um. And as we mentioned earlier in the episode, the region is currently being gentrified, uh, by like a wide margin. <laughs> by a lot. That that's literally yeah. like I get the newsletter. That's their business model now. <laughs> what. To, like the business model of Kingston is is to oh yeah to like yeah they literally say in the it's just to accept like, it like they're they're like yeah we're good that's our, that's our our model now <laughs> that's our thing <laughs> that's our thing um I mean once they put the hotels in like it was kind of obvious what they were doing right yeah because there's there's like there's like three new like three hotels that were made in the last decade and there's no industry in Kingston. No. Whatsoever. Like, it is it is just a place where people live. Like, that's it. There's no, like, serv- like major... It's all service jobs. Literally. Yeah. There is nothing else in Kingston. They don't... Kingston doesn't produce anything right now. There's... There, I mean, th- there's one place that does, like, industrial stuff if you want to buy yeah. lots of rivets. If, if rivets yeah. is your thing, we got them. Yeah. We're not exactly known for our rivets, though. No, actually, Rosendale, we however, is known for its. Brought it up in a past episode, um, the Alcoa Aluminum Factory. I think I mentioned what episode. I'm not going to be able to remember. It's not even worth. I, I can't even remember talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I will note that the uh, Rosendale cement factories have been like. Um, oh, we got famous turning cement. up. Apparently, yeah, that's that's famous. We got. It famous was part cement. of the Washington Monument. Is I one of the things. I think the Statue yeah. of Liberty's foundation was like really. I think I don't know hmm. Rosendale folk are very proud of their cement yeah that's fair I mean it's it's not bad cement no but it's cooler caves 
it has the caves are fucking sweet. Yeah. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today, Brandon. Ghosts. Because now, now a full thirty minutes into the episode, setting up this episode. <laughs> oh um, god. Oh wow. Okay. So so we're gonna be taking a trip down two hundred nine. Mm-hmm. Um, a road that you and I have traveled an uncountable number of times together. I've spent, uh, a, I would say, a significant percentage of my life on that road. Yeah. I think we've easily spent, like, a week just straight of us being on that road together in a car. Oh, probably, yeah. I would not doubt right? that. Like, <laughs> like I, would, I, would put, I would place about a week's worth of time between you and I combined when we're in the same car at the same time on that road. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take a, a stop in the town of Napanock, which um, is just past the jail, which is the jail that they actually had uh, Willem DeFeo of uh, the the Amityville murders uh, incarcerated at. Oh, fun. Um, yeah. So and we're going to be going just past the Walmart there uh, <laughs> that used to be a plaza. That had a flea market. And Brandon, do you remember that flea market when everyone bought all the knockoff air gun, airsoft guns? There's, I think so. <laughs> yeah, they, That's fun. there was a bunch of it. There was a bunch of knockoff airsoft guns. Like that was around like sixth or seventh grade that that happened. Yeah. Um, when it happened, I remember when it happened. Not because I I wasn't one of the people that got them, but I remember I being invited to a lot of like airsoft battles, like out of nowhere for no reason. And I, I'm mm-hmm, sure mm-hmm. that's probably the time when that happened. That's almost definitely the time when that happened. <laughs> um, and now, Brandon, when I say past the Walmart, I mean literally around the corner. Like, you get to the end of the parking walk, turn right, drive for three seconds, turn left, you're there. Yeah. Like, Brandon, it's om- the property is almost bordering the Walmart. If you look at the map right there. Yeah. It is literally almost it's, bordering uh, the Walmart parking lot. You just have a Google Maps image of Walmart and then a pin, right? It's basically at the end of the Walmart driveway is the Shannon Pretty Hotel. Much. And it's only going to be getting more haunted. And I'm only saying that because next door is the Schwangunk Senior Center. <laughs> <laughs> um, God damn it, Brandon. <laughs> So, so the other thing, um, I also posted a video of the Shanley Hotel in uh, Discord, right? Yeah. And every single person, every single video starts out by saying, "This is a ghost town." And keep in mind, these video, some of these videos were filmed after the Walmart was in. Yeah. So, like, they're saying it's a ghost town as they're turning into the Shanley, but if they have just like missed their turn, they would literally be at a Walmart yeah. that is always packed. So like, what the fuck? Just just as a heads up, everyone, this is not like this is like by a city person standards. This is the middle of nowhere, but by anyone who lives in suburbia or the country, this is like hopping. Oh yeah, that's right? where the Walmart like, is. Like, it's where the Walmart that's, is. That's your reference point when you give people directions. Yes, it is. It's literally the thing that you say. It's like the landmark. It is, and if I was to give directions it, to the Shanley Hotel, I would say, go to the Walmart, <laughs> and that would much. be it. That's the end of that the directions. That would be it. There would be nothing else. Because, like, between Accord and Ellenville, you know what the thing is that's between those two towns? The Walmart. There's the Walmart, there's the giant gnome. And then a few farms. Oh, yeah, the gnome that got... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the world's wait i don't remember the giant dick but i remember it being the world's largest gnome for like a week and then china made oh. china had a class on uh beating world records so they made a gnome that was just like an inch taller <laughs> there's i think in my instagram feed somewhere i have a picture of the kelder's farm gnome with a uh just a fat hog someone put on it God. Um, anywho, so the Shanley Hotel is supposedly a haunted inn. It was erected in 1845 by Thomas Rich. Um, it was not called the Shanley for the first, like, 50 years of its life. Instead, it's been called, like, the Napanock Hotel, and it depends on who owns it, right? Yeah. People change it depending on who has it. It's just the way it is. Um, now, this is something that I wasn't aware of, actually, uh, another thing I wasn't aware of, including the Shanley Hotel, Napanock was actually a pretty popular tourist destination at one point. 
Why? Napadoc. Yeah, I know. I well, because it's like underneath the Shawangunk Mountain Range. It's got forests. You oh, know, if you like hiking, do people yeah. like, drive to hike? Well, yes, people do drive to hike, Brandon. First of all, that is a thing that people do. Just to let you know. Okay. Um, but also, I'm talking about like the 1800s. Oh. And like okay. the 1900s. So like before, like electricity it was pretty hop in place right <laughs> before there were things to do it was pretty sweet yeah um i, I mean i'm not surprised because like if you erase the walmart in the jail um it's kind of nice it's pretty nice actually right because yeah. the there's like there are actually a lot of nice hiking trails in the area i will say that right um Additionally, at the time when this hotel was made, there was a readily available railroad. I don't think that that railroad doesn't service anymore, if my memory serves, because um, I can't even think of where it would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, while the Shanley, which at the time was the richest hotel, wasn't the target for the wealthiest clientele, it drew the guests of the fancier nearby Yama Farms Inn, right? Because unlike its upscale competition... The Shanley had something very important for Ulster County. A bar. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and I want to take a second to say that this is one of the most Ulster County things about this story. Because if there's one thing a place will have, it's a functioning bar. Yeah. Like, there's there's a town uh, called Denning mm -hmm. out uh, in the western part of Ulster County. And there's a road called Diamond Lane. Um, and it like is a family like almost everyone on that is the same family type thing. Yeah. Um, they have a bar, and it's in the that is legitimately in the middle of nowhere, and they still have a bar. There will always be. There's, <clears throat> there are bars. I'm. Tr <sighs> there's literally like you. This off two hundred nine. If you take a, I forget the name of the road. If. There's just roads where you there's literally mm -hmm. nothing but houses and forest and there will be a bar just in there the woods. Be. It's very important to the culture. <laughs> it's <laughs> very <laughs> important. <laughs> you have to be able to get shit faced pretty much wherever you are. Otherwise you're in trouble. Yeah. Um So allegedly and now allegedly and when I say allegedly, Brandon, I mean allegedly. Okay. In the most extreme sense of the word. Because it's the Hotel Shanley's uh, oh, own, this is like, their own history. Account. Yeah. Uh, the place apparently housed a gentleman's club and a bordello, which is roughly okay. a strip club and a brothel. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if that's true because I couldn't find any corroborating evidence that wasn't directly related <laughs> or sourced. From the from Shanley. The oh, Shanley. Yeah. It's one of those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the original structure was burnt to the ground on March 18th, 1995. Also when a nearby a home. Very Ulster County thing. Yes, super <laughs> Ulster County. Um, I mean, Kingston was burnt to the ground, yeah, too. The whole city just burnt uh, down. Yeah. So uh, a nearby home basically caught on fire and it ignited the hotel, burnt to the ground. Hotel gets reopened same year by the same owner, right? Yeah. Um, then. In 1906, the namesake of the Hotel Shanley came into the picture. James San Shanley, right? Um, he took over in 1906. He added his name to the, the, the bar. Um, important to him, he's a Shanley from New York City. Um, so, you that know, tracks. already, already, like, this is, this is just how, a, this is just how Ulster County works. People come from the city and do stuff. Um, while people who live here are just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the Shanleys are like a big deal. Um, they may they had like a bunch of restaurant businesses in New York City that were like serious business. Okay. Um, like they were one of the first like fancy restaurants to open north of Forty Second Street. Um, they had a Times Square location. Uh, there was a bunch of like super important stuff that they had, like that. Like historically speaking. They're relevant to New York City culture. Um, the Shanley Hotel makes a claim that is completely unverifiable, and I've tried <laughs> multiple times to even come close to verifying it. If you can't prove um, them wrong, it must be true. 
So they claim that the movie Gangs of New York was based uh-huh. on the Shanley family. I've looked into it multiple times. Every single source I read is does not mention the Shanley family and actually mentions that it's just generally inaccurate as far as movies go overall oh, and based on a fake gang in the first yeah. place. Um, so there's another, let's just put another like little, if you got your tally marks, let's try and keep a, a running tally of the number of things the Shanley Hotel has claimed that can't be proven. Um, cause that's one of them. Uh, <laughs> so James's wife, Beatrice, who he married in 1910 was said to run an upscale, uh, tea and social parties. So, and I know that this is true. This is verifiable because there's a fuck ton of newspaper articles talking about how the, the Shanleys are hosting a, like a tea party or some bullshit in yeah. the daily Freeman. Because I have, like, snippings of, like, at least five of those. Yeah. Famous for um, the tea parties. Yeah. Uh, but but that being said, uh, supposedly, um, they earned the attention of Thomas Edison and Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay. To the point that uh, Eleanor was said to be a good friend of Beatrice. And that right? checks out. Like, people in the area know where the Roosevelt's house is, yeah. and it's not far away. So, like, mm-hmm. they would be in the general area frequently. And for reference to people who are not from the not from Ulster County, it's about fifty minutes away, uh, mainly because there's a mountain between the two. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's close. It's on the Hudson. It's in uh, Hyde Park. Yeah, it's um, close. So it's it it's completely reasonable that they would be like friendly. Yeah. Um, if yeah. So uh, and this also is is <laughs> also back up at a non-zero. I'm just realizing a non-zero chance Thomas Edison was just electrifying animals in, like, the Shanley, like, parlor. Just, like, stray probably. dogs. Yeah, probably. That was his, I wouldn't that was be surprised deal. to talk about how alternating current was bad. Yeah, and he just made yeah. so many animal ghosts. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's that's why the Shanley's <laughs> all did. Yeah. It's just animal ghosts from Thomas Edison. Yeah. Um, so, we, this also has some, like, backing, too, because... Uh, the, the Shanleys were invited um, to the inauguration of the president. So uh, for FDR's inauguration. So there is there is some like basis to the fact that he was like, you know, they were like friendly. Yeah. Right. Um, there, there's there's no evidence that's pointing against it, basically. Um, so. And I mentioned this before, but like I was looking through the, the official stories um, but when he, like, you know, like the notion of like the New York city stuff, all that stuff came up, but also when he took control of the hotel, he made some considerable improvements to the hotel, Brandon. Nice. His improvements included adding a billiards room. Cool. A barber shop. Also cool. And introduced hot and cold spring water as amenities. Oh, damn. They got that hot this water. Is in, this is in 1906 too. So like, this is some serious shit. Yeah. Um, I also want to take a point. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll come back. I'll circle back to this because I found the Shanley Improvements article. Yeah. Um. Uh, it was it was run on January 9th, uh, nineteen twelve, and just remember that because uh-huh. that date's important. Okay. <laughs> um. So, at this point in the story, we can finally start talking about where the haunt is haunting is are supposed to have started, right? Yeah. Um. Although there is a claim for another one, but. Even the Ghostbusters, the Ghost Hunters say that this is a bullshit claim. So, like, it's probably oh, a super bullshit yeah. claim. If um, they're calling bullshit on something, you know yeah, it's bullshit. You know it's absolutely bullshit. Uh, so, in 1912, the Shanleys uh, finally had their first child. Cool. Um, who lived to the ripe old age of six months. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So, you noticed that I said 1912, Brandon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the child was born ni- July 15th, 1911, which I uh-huh. found. I was able to find their birth announcement, and I was able to find their obituary. And you want to know what date that was posted? Oh, uh, what, what, what's that? January 8th, 1912. Oh, good. <laughs> the day the, before the... The day after his child They posted dies. about all the improvements. They're like, look yeah. what we're doing. It's great. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, but they- that being said... <laughs> 
Gonna go ahead yeah, and say that Shanley probably wasn't super involved with his child. Yeah, probably not. Uh, he he's a, a interesting person. Um, so Beatrice also uh, they tried to have more kids. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And they had tried to have two more kids, and neither of them made it to a year old. How did the one? So, how wait? None of them made it. So none of them made it. Well, uh, meningitis is the reason that they gave. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, which might be then that it's like a, a hereditary problem if it hit multiple kids. Maybe it's maybe I couldn't find the obituaries for the other kids, so yeah. I have no idea on that huh. front, right? Um, but but. Uh, things were even worse for Beatrice. Beatrice had a rough time. She, she, uh, she didn't have a good time? So her sister died in 1918 during the influenza ap- epidemic. Oh, damn. Um, She's really not having a fun le- time, is she? No, no. And it, le- it, it But what ended up happening was Beatrice had to take care of her two nieces. So on the negative, a bunch of people close to her died. On the but plus side, she gets proxy free children. Kids. She gets her proxy exactly. Kids. Yeah, she gets free kids. Hell yeah! So like, hey, it all it all evens out, I suppose. Trade was or worth not, it. Really? Was it though? It was. All right. Um. So Beatrice was not obviously not happy with the loss in her life. Um. Like, I mean, anyone would be unhappy with that. Yeah. And what they've done is they've begun to say that she wanders the hotel to this day. Um appearing as both a specter in a scent, so, like, people are said to smell her perfume and shit like that. Huh. Right? Um, so, there's another ghost that's said to have roots in yet another nearby accident. Okay. Uh, on September... 1990, in September of 19, 1915, a local doctor, Walter Thayer Jr., was backing up his car in the alley between his home and the hotel. Uh-huh. Uh, when his five-year-old son... Decided he wanted to jump on the car's running board. Walter Thayer the third slipped and uh, fell off the car, and was then uh, uh, promptly backed over by his father. Oh God! <laughs> uh, which caused some severe head injuries. Use the brake. Yeah. Use the brake. Fascinatingly, though, he didn't die. So. Oh good. Yeah. I uh, if he'd get I. At that time frame, it would either be, it would either be, I think it would be a Model T in uh, 1915, but I'm not sure. They had it's either an, um Use them. <laughs> yeah, no, but, well, no, I'm just saying, like, in terms of car. I think. Oh, yeah. I didn't look up, I couldn't find, actually, an article of, like, an incident report or anything like that. Um, yeah. But, and the only reason I say that as, like, a thing is because it would totally be an incident report. If they're talking about, like, the fact that they're going to the fucking inauguration or having a tea party... Yeah. You better believe they talk about the fact that uh, Dr. Walter Thayer Jr. ran over his kid. Yeah. That would be in a newspaper article. Um, That being said, uh, I was looking at the Daily Freeman, which is based out of Kingston, as opposed to uh, the Ellenville Gazette or Times or whatever, which was closer to Napanok and would be more likely to have it, but yeah, that particular I, paper I can is still not still see like Doctor backs over a child's head in the Kingston newspapers. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um They had so an article about did, pickles. They could write about <laughs> Well Well Brandon, there is a pickle festival in Ulster County. We love festivals. We do love we festivals. We got pickle festivals, garlic festivals, we got wolf we just had the wool festival the other weekend. The Wool Festival, the, the one in uh, Rhinebeck? Uh, yeah. That's not Ulster County, though. Oh, uh, we had the Italian Festival. We had the... These These are all within the last couple months, by the way. <laughs> we have the Hooli. We've got the Hooli. We've got the Street Fest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We love festivals. What else? We do have a lot of festivals. Yeah. There was also the... We had, I went to the was, Caribbean Festival earlier. We've got yep, yep. the. Uh, that's an old. That's a, that's actually in Ulster County because it's it's Socrates. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Food. Or as my friend would say, or as our one of our mutual friends would say, say sugar titties. Sugar, yes, it's in sugar titties. Um. So, amazingly, this kid survives, and the only reason I say amazingly is because it's like 1915. If you like scrape your knee wrong, like you might die. Yeah. Um. So he survived. Had four kids, became a lawyer, and died in 1989. Oh, damn. 
I am 100% sure that I found the right person because I found his fucking obituary. Okay. Did the obituary yeah. mention that his dad drove over his head? No, of okay. course it didn't. Um, and Brandon, I was doing some Facebook creeping. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if I had only a single degree of re uh, separation from some of his relatives on Facebook. Oh, that's funny. Like, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like... I'm like thirty percent sure I'm like one Facebook connection away from being friends with somebody that uh, is the progeny of the progeny of Walter Thayer the third. So, <laughs> regardless, um, bizarrely, and I, I have an explanation for this later, but I kind of want to read it in this context because it confused the fuck out of me, and I want to confuse the fuck out of our listeners too. Okay. Um, so, the official Shanley Hotel website implies that a young Walter may haunt the attic as a spirit affectionately called John Jonathan. And this is super confusing because it turns out that people believe that a ghost child named Jonathan haunts the hotel in the attic. Okay. And that that kid died in an accident in front of the hotel. Okay. But... The one verifiable accident was Walter's, and Walter lived until 1989. Yeah. So why the fuck would he haunt the hotel as a child? Whatever. That's weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is this is what's written on the on the website. For many years, for years, many believed that the boy was the spirit affectionately called Jonathan that plays in the attic. If he wasn't the victim of a car accident, who is the little boy? And that was after, like, talking about the, the Walter Thayer the third yeah. accident. And I got super fucking confused by that. And that's all I'm going to say. It it didn't... There is a history... Uh, if you read the history for the Shanley Hotel, they really need to send it through, like, a proofreader. Yeah. Uh, or somebody, like, a style guide person, or somebody who just, like, knows how to tell a story. Because... It's not great. Um, but Brandon, let's return to some child death. Hell yeah. So Beatrice does not monopolize the child death at the Shanley Hotel. Okay. A barber named Peter Greger lived in the hotel. Uh, he worked in the hotel and worked in the barber shop. Um, he also lost a, a child during his tenure at the hotel. This time, the three-year-old Rosie, had, who had been exploring a nearby Hornbeak Farms... Uh, when she fell into a well after removing the cover. That's a real old-timey way for a kid to die. It really is. That's like is. a classic old-timey kid death. That that being said, I've seen the well. Like, I've seen pictures of the well. Yeah. Um, I could totally see a child falling down that and dying. Yeah. Especially because it would be actively in use at that time. So, like, it wouldn't be covered by, a, like, a cement slab. It would be covered by, like, a wooden top. Yeah. So you could easily well, get you know, at the it. thing about wells... Is uh, they should put a uh, some kind of circular fence around it, you know, some kind of like a railing almost. Yeah, it's well. I mean, keep in mind, Brandon, this is a fucking farm. You know how farms uh, work yeah. in Ulster County. That's very true. Right, you've worked on a farm. Yeah, it, they don't give a shit about the safety <laughs> rail. Yeah, it's a very much a hey, uh, don't touch that sharp thing. And then if you yeah. do touch the sharp thing, you now know that it's sharp. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so her body was ultimately found two hours later after her falling into the well, apparently. Um, the distraught family ultimately left with their remaining daughter back to Brooklyn in light of the tragedy. An apparition of the girl is said to roam the halls to this day. Now, I want to point something out once again. Couldn't find evidence that this actually fucking happened. Huh. Very important. Um, and to make matters worse... They have some serious accusations against Peter Greger that they levy in the one video that we have linked in the show notes. Yeah. Like, super serious, super bad things that they're accusing him of. And they don't even have, like, a newspaper clipping that shows that the child even died or existed. Huh. So, keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure Peter Greger did, though. So, that's great. Um, it's... I don't think it's a stretch for, like, if people are trying to leverage the haunted aspect, if you have a well that's cemented over to, like, make up a spooky thing about the cemented over well. 
Well, the thing is, it's not even, like, fully cemented over. They just put a cement slab on it. You can literally lift, like, like if you get a backhoe, you can yeah. lift it up. It's not, like, permanently affixed. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why they wouldn't just fill it in. Like, yeah. honestly, like, fill, fill it, it in, in with and, sand. And make it, like, a usable area again. Yeah, it's it's really strange. I don't I don't get it. Put, but a, put a gazebo then again, over it. Then again, Brandon, this is a recent picture of the Shanley Hotel, which you've seen. Yep. Um, yep. And it's uh, it's a real shit piece. Like, it, it is a piece of shit. It looks like there's supposed to be an eviction notice on some of the windows. Well. Or not an eviction notice. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, is there? <laughs> Brandon, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. <laughs> You're not far off. Um, like, but it also has broken fucking windows. I I drove past. I drove past an actually like building that had the things from the city on it, like that it's uninhabitable. Mm-hmm. That looked better than this yesterday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was in it, town. I I have no idea how the fuck this is like up to code for the county. Like, no clue. Literally no clue. There is no way that this is inhabitable. Like, an inhabitable space by the county standards. Like, no, no fucking way. Unless there's some weird no shit about it being, like, way. an old building and they get, like, grandfathered into stuff just because it's old. But I can't even see... But that's... But Brandon... Because it, it, it does not look even the unsafe. Case. I can tell you that for a fact that's not the case and we'll get into it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Gregor's departure was roughly around the time that the United States ratified the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, or as it's more colloquial known, Prohibition, right? Uh Uh-huh. Naturally, because the bar was one of the bigger draws of the hotel, um, James would run a speakeasy, supposedly, and participate in bootlegging. Um, A trap door in the bar apparently hid his bootlegging stash that would ultimately be raided on February 26th, 1932. Shanley would be arraigned in federal court alongside his bootlegging partner, John Powers. However, the two walked away with a fine. And this is implied on the the Shanley History Hotel as being uh, related to his connection to the Roosevelt's. I can, uh, additionally, that doesn't seem wildly like I could see that. It doesn't seem wildly inaccurate. You're right. I I when I first read that, I'm like, mm, okay, that's probably that makes sense. Um. It's also worth noting that they're saying that there's still an operating brothel at this point. The Shanley Hotel's history, right? Um, According to Sal, who is a character we're going to be meeting in a minute. Okay. But Sal is directly affiliated with the Hotel Shanley. Gotcha. Um, So anything Sal says, grain of salt, pile of sodium chloride. So, Brandon, we know that he wasn't... We definitely know that he wasn't in prison, at least, in 1933, because he attended the inauguration. We have yeah. clear evidence of that. In his obituary, there's no discussion of him being ever arrested um, or anything along those lines. No, like, disgrace. They call him just a Napanak businessman. Um, so there's no evidence pointing to this particular story. Right? Okay. I couldn't find a fucking police blotter, like, for this. Yeah. Right? And this seems like something that I should have been able to find information on. Yeah, this um, seems very... So... Like it should have been that written being, about. That being said, there are gaps in the, the documentation... In the um, the archives. So it could have potentially been a gap in what the archive that I missed it in. But the only place that I see this claim repeated time and time again, once again, is the Shanley Hotel. Huh. However, Brandon, okay, I did find a record of Shanley um, being indicted for bootlegging, okay. but it was in 1911. Oh, before much earlier, it was before prohibition. Wait, how by did, seven years? How much booze are he you was moving? making moonshine? Yeah, he. There's no other. There's like nothing else that he could have been doing. He was fucking making moonshine. Yeah. Right? Like, that's what he was doing. He was moonshining. Yeah. Um, 
so after that though, uh, no, like it says that he was going to, all right, let me read what it says. Uh, James Shanley, uh, who conducted a, ho- who conducts a hotel at Nopinok was indicted by the latest last grand jury for violating the liquor tax law. Oh, in selling illegal liquor on Saturday. Right. So he's selling illegal liquor, yeah. meaning I can only assume that it's bootlegged. Right. Cause or, or stolen or something like he shouldn't have had access to it or he had an improper liquor license or something. It, lo- right? it reads like he's selling liquor on a Sunday, but also not disclosing it and not paying taxes on whatever he's making. Yeah. So I don't even know if it's necessarily bootlegging. Right. So I, I take back what I said. He's he's <laughs> he's not even it, it's not even like a guarantee that he's bootlegging. He just did something shitty with with liquor, it, yeah. liquor laws, which is easy, very easy. Um, so he gave bail on Monday before Judge Canteen in his case will be taken up at the adjourned adjourned turn of county court on November thirteenth. So he definitely had something involving liquor, um, uh, but like. We don't know what, and we don't know what the outcome was. Uh, but that being said, Brandon, like, you know, we know that he it wasn't so bad that he lost, like, his liquor license. Yeah. We know I mean, it wasn't so thing. bad that he lost... <clears throat> I've definitely the, like, illegally purchased liquor before because of, like, we have weird liquor laws. So, like, for example, you can't buy alcohol before 10 a.m., but if you like grocery shopping early in the morning, like, they'll still technically sell you alcohol if you're in like a grocery store before 10 Mm. (laughs) a.m like because they're yeah because they're just like this is done but technically they're making an illegal sale of alcohol well well, because it's fucking it's fucking morality laws who gives a shit yeah fuck morality laws they're worthless there's Um, (laughs) agreed yeah that's just all i'm gonna say they're fucking worthless yeah um because because the worst part is the worst thing that morality laws do is they make it more dangerous for people to do stuff that they were going to do anyways. Yeah. That is all they do. Yep. Full, full stop. There's nothing else. We're not going to mention anything else about it. That is all that happens. Um, so James would ultimately die in 1937. Uh, he was survived by his wife, and I was trying to look for his wife's obituary, but I couldn't find it. She's um, an immortal. Prob- well, maybe. But also because it's really fucking hard to find... Uh, well... Because they called her Miss James Shanley, even like in the 60s yeah. or 40s or 50s, because that's just what they fucking do. It's shitty, but that's just what happens, right? Yeah. Um, the property would then be sold by Beatrice to Alan H. Hazen. Um, and during his, his run as the owner of the hotel, one of the rooms got a new moniker. And you want to know what that r- moniker was, Brandon? Oh, what was it? The Silent Room. Uh, now, guess. Guess why it was called The Silent Room. What? What? Use your know. use all of your Ulster County knowledge to try and figure out why it was called The Silent Room. Uh. Uh. Please. Why would you have to be so- silent around somebody who owns a bar? Oh, they're hungover as fuck. Yep. They're hungover as fuck. <laughs> yep. He had a room that people weren't allowed to like make noise around <laughs> because he was so he got so shit faced drunk and hung over that he would sleep it off in the room. That's funny. Don't make a habit of that. Yeah, that's not good. It's not good if that so no clue if that's actually the real story, but that's the lore. But but that being said, I fully fucking believe it. Yeah. I fully fucking I've been around alcoholics. I know how it goes. Yeah. Um, why would you build, see it so, most time, any time that's ever happened for me, like, it's because like, it, it's a special occasion. And I'm like, oh, I'll have fun. And then the next morning I'm like, never, ever again. It, the morning after isn't ever like, never, ever again. No, no sane person would turn that into like, I need to build a room so I can make this a habit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't build the room. It's just one of the rooms. Yeah. That was what the room was for. Then. But still, like, you should never be like, this is my hangover. Like, you don't, well, you shouldn't have a hangover room. <laughs> you also shouldn't, like, 
have a hangover room that's such a hangover room that guests even are like, oh, fuck, we don't talk around. We don't say anything <laughs> around that I room. Forgot it's for guests. Oh, that's right? so bad. So yeah. the, I, I can see the staff doing that because that's just like, you know, you learn how to avoid when the boss is doing something, right? Yeah. But the guests, if the guests even are like, oh, we don't fucking, we don't make any noise around that fucking room. Like, oh, <laughs> you know that it's bad. Yeah. Um, so Alan owned the property until his death in 1971. Um, and the hotel would operate until 1991 when it shuttered its doors, remaining empty until 2005. So it closed in 1991, yeah. and then re- then somebody finally bought it in 2005. So it sat empty for 14 years. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, Brandon, you know what Ulster County is like, and you know what that particular part of Ulster County is like. Yeah. So you know that that place was fucking infested. By the end of everything. <laughs> like, when that dude got it, it was a shithole. Yeah. Like, complete shithole. Um, I would not be surprised if kids fucked in there. Oh, they did. Absolutely. They did. Like, it's, there's that's, no doubt. That's a thing. Well, I want to say a thing that kids do is you go and fuck in abandoned buildings. That's. Mm-hmm. It is a thing. It's, I've done it. It's, it's. There, there's like, there. You will. There'll be I'll have a group of friends, and then they'll be like, "Hey, we're gonna go find an abandoned building and fuck it. Do you want to come with us?" And you just like make a day of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. It pe- people did that. Yes. No. It is. It I is. Born, it's one hundred percent a thing. It. It was shut down the year I was born. It. It, it, it until two thousand. Yeah. So if you were just like. Oh yeah. Somebody, somebody definitely fucked in there. There's yeah, no chance. Like, like if you're just there's a zero chance. Little tiny bit older than me. Yeah, people fucked in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. People fucked in there. They did drugs in there. They did all sorts of stupid shit. Yeah. They broke windows. You know that they did all those things. These all happened. One hundred percent. Um, but before we get to the reopening, Brandon, there it is important to note that the Shanley Hotel claims that there is one ghost story from the time period before, um. Before the like hotel got new owners, right? And it was after the you know the period where it was just a fuck house. Yeah. Um, Wait, so the, the ghost stories from the fuck house is gonna. <laughs> oh man, if there was a ghost story from the fuck house time, that would be great. But Brandon, the so fact good. of the matter is, so so I want to also point out, Brandon. I want to start you a new saw... podcast. <laughs> Hauntings from the fuck house. Yeah. Uh, the haunted fuck house. Yeah. Every that's gonna be Well the fuck ghosts. Remember the fuck ghosts from did you see uh Doom Patrol? Yes. Yeah, the fucking ghosts. It's every ghost episode from now on, I'm gonna title the copy uh uh like ghost stories or hauntings from the fuck house. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> three. The- I've got a few in the I've got a few banked, so that's a thing now. Honestly, Honestly, any any ghost stories that's set in an abandoned, like a once or like currently abandoned house, should just be called hauntings in the fuck house because like that's what's happening in there. Yeah, um, that's what abandoned buildings are for. Mm-hmm. Pretty much that and getting tetanus. Actually, yeah, then getting tetanus. Let me rephrase that. That's that, what haunted buildings oh, are for if you still live with your parents. <laughs> yes, <laughs> fucking tetanus, heroin. Yes. Those are the three things that haunted uh, our abandoned buildings are for. Nothing else. Those are the three things. If you're not if you're not doing one of those things, you're not really in an abandoned building. You're not using the space properly. Facts. You're not. You're not. You really aren't. Um, so, oh, did I mention? Uh, yeah, I mentioned heroin. So, all right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, don't the paranormal do claims the, are alleged. Don't do that. The last one. Don't. Do oh that. yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. That's not us saying to do it opioids will fuck you up especially given the fact that fentanyl is a thing if yeah. you're going to do opioids if you're going to do heroin get a test get kit. a test kit please like i'm not gonna be a, i'm not gonna be a dude who's like don't do the thing because it's like that doesn't fucking do anything but i am gonna be the dude who's like know what you're fucking taking get a yeah. test kit like that's the one thing that- like as a parent that's a thing i'm just gonna be like i'm just gonna like leave test kits here and ask no questions <laughs> 
Like mm-hmm. that's just a thing to that. Yeah, yeah. Just just know know that you need to use this. Whatever. Like you're gonna do what you're gonna fucking do. Yeah. No matter what I say, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I think is the right thing to tell you and what you should do. Yeah. But I know you're yeah. not gonna fucking necessarily listen to that. You might. Yeah. But at least if there's one thing you take away, do it safely. Test. Um Yeah, do it safely, test it, or also if you don't have a test kit, make the person next to you do it and then wait a half hour and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Use your friends. Sacrifice your friends on the pyre of questionable stuff. Well, no, not your stuff. friends. The people you're getting it from. Yeah, that's true. Um, so the haunting, the paranormal supposedly started during the 1980s, right? Um, it was operating as a bar uh, during like the later years of its life in the original run. And a regular patron of the bar is said to have seen a stern-faced woman in a Victoria-era dress okay. in the bathroom. The patron is said to have then fled the restroom, never to re-enter it. <laughs> it was, However, it was Nadia from what we do in the shadows. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be so fucking cool. That would be fucking amazing. I'd probably go back to the bathroom if it was Nadia. Oh hell yeah. Um. So, according to legend, Brandon, this didn't stop the dude from going to the bar. <laughs> Instead, he continued to visit, but would go home and come back if he ever needed to use the bathroom. And when I read that, I was like, okay, now this is the most Ulster County story I've ever heard. That's absolutely <laughs> fair. Yeah, because he probably was drunk driving. You know, he was actually, he was definitely drunk driving. Definitely. Yeah. Um, also, I've been in bars where, like, I'll go next you don't door. don't want to use that toilet. I'll go next door to use the bathroom. Yeah. Um... <laughs> That being said, Brandon, I'm thoroughly unconvinced this story actually happened. Yeah. Um, or at least, I, I, I there's no evidence to point to it. The only source that I can find is the Linda Zimmerman book, and she doesn't really do a good job on sourcing things. Like, she doesn't include clear references to stuff. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't, like, look for a primary source on this. Now, let's get back to uh, 2005, right? Uh-huh. So... As noted before, the sat, the hotel sat empty until 2005 when Salvatore and Cindy Niscosia purchased the derelict building. Now, I'm going to just read what's on the website because what the fuck? This is literally word for word what is on the website, Brandon. Okay. So get ready. In 1991, it closed its doors and was abandoned for 10 years until a man with a vision and a heart of gold what? decided to take on the challenge of restoring the building to its former glory. Yes. What? <laughs> that that you that know, sentence? Okay, I know for a fact Salvatore wrote that. Just uh... <laughs> Well, wait. It gets better. In 2005, Salvatore Nicosa bought the Shanley unaware of spirits residing within its desolate walls. It did not take long for the spirits to make themselves known to Sal as they saw his efforts of labor of love befitting the noble history of the hotel. It is oh, not necessarily... A, I just told you the history of the hotel. It's not ne- necessarily noble. It, it was a fucking bar for, like, most of its existence. <laughs> Sal needs to get over himself is what I take from the, those lines. Oh... Um, from 2007 until his death in July of 2016, so Sal kind of did get over himself. <laughs> uh, Sal poured his heart He's into committed. the building, bringing it's it... It's not haunted enough! Yeah, he decided to haunt it. Yeah. Um, Sal poured his heart into the building, bringing it back to life, and giving both guests and the spirits a second home. Now that the haunted Shanley has reopened, you will not want to miss the opportunity to sleep with the spirits! Maybe you'll have the opportunity to catch the glimpse of Beatrice, James, Rosie, John, Joe, Jonathan, or several of the other spirits that still linger in the corridors, in the rooms, waiting to make you feel right at home. Um, so yeah, that that's like, that's what they say is like the origin point. Yeah. Um, I did find, uh, I think it was a Daily Freeman article. One second, I'll tell you. Fifteen. Uh... Yeah, uh, it was it was in an article called "Hotel Restoration of Effort Heralds Nap- Napa Not Com- Revival." Um, so I did find a article talking about when he purchased it. Okay. 
So um, the couple plans to have the hotel up and running without, within 18 months and will create the hotel's original rooms with a few extras like an apartment for the manager and a suite on the second floor from rooms Sal said were one time used as a bro- brothel. I want to oh. point out, Sal said. That means they okay. couldn't verify it. Probably. That means yeah. they couldn't verify if the, Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Probably was what that means. Uh, <laughs> there was a bowling alley in the back of the building, and although they aren't advertising it as an attraction, both Sal and Cindy say they have encountered ghosts in the building. <sighs> we have pictures and voice recordings of several of them, Sal said. Okay. They The Daily Freeman knew what was up. They clearly yeah, they pointed did. out that this is how they're advertising it, and we can't confirm any of the stories. Is, yeah, well, they. Uh, if you read that, that is the that is the uh, political way of saying they're full of shit. Just yeah. be aware. Yeah. If you read that and don't think that they're saying no, they're fucking. It's nonsense what they're saying. Like the only reason it's they don't outright say this is nonsense is because it might be like it could be conceived perceived as libelous because there's no evidence to point to that. Yeah. And I also want to point out that this is just our opinion. Right, we do, we're, This is based on what we're reading and what we're seeing, and we're saying these things. That doesn't necessarily mean this is what's happening, but it also there is also no proof that points to the things they're saying being true. And that's what we're gonna. That's that's all we're going to say about it. Satire. Satire. Um, Satire. The conspicuously. Podcast. Pretty much. I mean, that's that's pretty much what every type of story. If it's a if you're talking about the paranormal, you kind of have to put it in the satire categorization because, like, people in the paranormal community are su- have such a stick up their ass about some things. Yeah. Right. Like, and it's weird, and it depends on the person, and like, some people just get really, really shitty about it in a way that is just obnoxious. But whatever. Um. So as I mentioned before. Uh, conspicuously, and actually, no, I didn't mention this. Conspicuously in the article, they didn't talk to any fucking locals, Brandon. Huh. About whether it was a goat, there were ghosts or brothels there. Yeah. Right? And I really, 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 really want to stress the fact that they said they aren't advertising it as the part of their attraction, which is important. Oh, one, because they explicitly are. But, uh. Yes. They, they, they explicitly are, but also, like, talk to some locals, because a thing, a thing about the county of, of which we're in, it, it just, people don't move. No, no, they don't. People don't, so you could probably go to Napanock and find people who have just, their family's just been there for the whole yeah. time. <laughs> I could probably go to the senior center and be like, hey, what do you know about that hotel? Yeah. And they'll just be like, ah, Sal was a piece of shit. Yeah, that fucking guy. Or, or something like that. Like, like, they'll just tell me exactly everything. And I don't even need to like, like, I could probably just walk in there and just be like, so, what are your opinions on the Shanley? They'll tell me everything. Yeah. <laughs> Literally everything. They'll also probably tell me that it was a kid fuck stop. Yeah. They're like- and they will not... Th- that's just what's gonna happen. It's like there's um, a period after 1991 where just the smell of sex was in the air all the time. <laughs> it would never stop. All the time. <laughs> it was terrible. It was just salty. <laughs> you think you're at the sea? <laughs> um, I don't know if there's ghosts, but it sure as hell was moaning all the time, all hours of the night. God damn it. So. Just to break things down. A lot of kids uh, came down with tetanus. <laughs> in their asses for some reason. <laughs> oh. Who who sits on who sits on nails like that? Oh, that one serial killer guy. Oh yeah. He shoved right. all the needles right. up there. Yeah, I forgot about that guy. I don't remember his name and I don't want to remember his name. <laughs> Um, so in short, Brandon, like just as a brief summary, um, Sal takes control of the hotel in 2005, reopens it in 2007. And as you know, 
uh, and because you're from the area, no one in their fucking right mind would want to spend uh, time at a hotel in Napanok. No, no. No. You couldn't pay me to spend the night in a hotel in Napanok. Um, well, no, that's not true. You could probably pay me. But I'd, I'd need some money for it before I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. That makes sense. There's, um, I, it's, I just want to make this clear. They're right at the... So Walmart, I mean, they just recently stopped it, but famously, 24-hour parking lot. Like, you could do overnight parking at Walmart. I would rather just overnight in the Walmart parking lot. (laughs) Yes. Oh, oh, I would would 100% overnight in the Walmart parking lot. I would go into the Walmart and hide in the clothes. (laughs) And just sleep there. Okay. (laughs) Like you're you're a seven-year-old hiding from your parents? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's what I do, because like there's places there's there's hidden places in WalMarts that you can sleep. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Just go if in the know. stock room. Just go in the back. Yeah. There's literally just put nothing, on a blue shirt. Just so everyone knows, there's literally nothing stopping anyone ever from going to the employee section, and there's probably no one probably back there. And no one is going to care. Nobody. Ca- you don't get paid enough to care. Unless it's a manager, no one will care. They'll just be like, hey. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Oh, also, as a guy that used to do deliveries, just wa- you can just go straight into, like, no one ever questioned me being in the, like, I was supposed to be there, but no one ever questioned, like, you can just go into the back of literally any building and ask any employee, oh, where's the bathroom? And then you can just wander around and do whatever you want. You know what else you can do, too? Uh, if you have a hand cart, you can go fucking anywhere. Oh, yeah. Like literally anywhere. If you have a hand cart, like or like a like a truck, like a hand truck, yeah, you can fucking go literally anywhere, and no one will ever qu- ask you a question. Yeah, it's great because they just assume you you they just assume you drop something off somewhere. That's all, and you're going somewhere else to return the hand cart. Yeah, they, they, that's all. You, that's all you need to do. There's a lot of things you can just do. Mm-hmm. Ladders too. Ladders don't get those are hard. Those don't have wheels. Those are harder. Those are harder. But ladders will also work. <laughs> um. So, but yeah, as I was saying, no one would stay in fucking Nathanac when uh, Kingston is less than twenty minutes down the road, and there are way nicer bread and back breakfasts in other parts of the like area. Yeah. Right. This is a shitty. I. I cannot express how shitty this hotel looks like from the outside right now. This, again, I I walked past, or not walked past, drove past a building yesterday that was closed by the city that was in better shape than the fucking Shanley. There are there are literally broken windows. There in multiple videos shot at different times, they have pointed out the fact the windows are broken. It is a thing. It is a perennial staple of the Shanley Hotel. <laughs> um, and I have a theory as to where that, that window is, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, <laughs> so, uh, at this point, I think Sal realized, oh, fuck, who the fuck is going to stay here? Yeah. Um, let me take this in, this history that's kind of interesting, because, I mean, there is some legitimately interesting bo- spots in there, like Eleanor Roosevelt, Thomas Edison, you know... Stuff along those lines. That's actually come some kind of interesting shit, right? Um, but then he's like, you know what? Ghosts. Well, then I can explain why it looks so shitty. I think he thought it was going to be cool to open hotel, bought one, realized how expensive it is to fix a hotel, and just went, yeah. well, I'll do ghosts, and then I'll never have to fix anything. Well, okay. So, Brandon, one floor of the hotel... The top floor? Yeah. They haven't even done fucking anything to it since 2007. Oh, God. It, it looks the same as if it was an abandoned hotel. Yeah. Like, it looks no different. The floors look super shitty. Everything looks unfinished. It's terrible. It looks... You can see the roof from the third floor. <laughs> like, cool. they don't even have... They don't even have, like, a sheetrock cover or, like... Not only that, but, like, it's exposed, like, rotten wood. Yeah. So, like, I I have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Because I would, like, I would be so embarrassed. (laughs) It's haunted. But, regardless. We're keeping it authentic. Yeah. 
Now, and Brandon, I want to tell you their motto because it's the most insufferable thing. <sighs> the spirits are in with two ends. Oh, good. Oh, yes, because also yes. it was a bar. So, yeah. Uh, oh, that's yeah. so clever and cool. Oh, by the way, Sal is from Brooklyn. Yeah, of course he was. He looks like my old fucking <laughs> optometrist. Come on, like, <gasps> Sal. Oh. Um. So, we touched on the like, like he'd we're... return a dish at a restaurant because the mashed potatoes weren't up to his his liking. Oh, he returned a steak at a restaurant because it wasn't well done enough. Yeah, it wasn't done enough. <laughs> it wasn't done enough. Like, oh god, that's he's exactly that type of, type of person, right? He'd be like. You know, I can still see, like, a little red. Send that back in. I need it gray. Ugh. I actually, like, he looks like someone I've met before, too. Um, Which, I feel like there's a... He has a face that you see all the time in Ulster County, is all I'm going to say. Yeah, very much. Right? Very like, much so. Like... I'm not, like, trying to knock on his face or anything. He just has that face. The face that you see around this area. But, regardless. So, okay. Brandon, we barely talked about... Huh? Okay, so I'm on their website. I just went to, to their website. Yeah. I can't figure out... Oh, that's... What? I... Oh, the picture's from... The picture's not from the website, oh, no, by no. the way. It's from... I, I'm not talking about where the that's picture his, is. That's his obituary photo. I'm talking about... I can't figure out how to book a room. It's all oh, just I, ghost we'll, hunts. How do you we'll book a fucking that. room? Brandon, we're going to get into that. I'm on book we're not even it's, that. Only, Brandon, it's only ghost Brandon, hunts. Brandon, if you will look at the sidebar of the episode, um, there is still quite a bit left in the episode. <laughs> the, it's, a, it's not a hotel. It's exclusively $750 no. ghost hunts. No, we're going to talk about the pricing schedule. We're going to talk about the pricing scheme, and we're going to be talking about what they do. How do I stay because the night? It's, Fucking insane. We'll talk about that, Brandon. I'm going to tell you how to do the things. I will tell you. It's fucking insane and in why this is a whole... Ep this is like a fucking 17-page document because of the way that their websites run. So, um, we haven't talked much about the Wait supposed minute. phenomenon. Brandon. Wait a minute. Please. What are you going to say? I was gonna say that you literally can't stay the night because this is all guests must vacate by 10 a.m. Or maybe you can't stay. All, they have a de time where you must vacate, and then should you wish to leave later than 10 a.m., it's $150 Brandon, Brandon, an hour. You gave it away, Brandon! <laughs> Brandon, we're not there yet! We're not there yet in the story! You're breaking my narrative flow! This is. I just scrolled down. I just scrolled down. Brandon, Brandon, please I'm not wait. Say any words. Please, I'm we're not going say any to words. talk about. We are going to talk about this in a minute. Let's talk about the supposed claims That's so first. So much money, and then we can talk about about how you spend the night at the Shanley Hotel. Okay. Holy shit! First, we talk about the claims. Then we talk about spending the night. Okay. Okay. Promise me, we'll talk okay. about that in more depth. It's it's mind-boggling, and I have so much to say about it. Because that website has so much, just, there are so many gems on that website that we need to talk about. But we're not there. <sighs> we haven't even told the people about what is supposedly haunting this hotel. Okay? So, um... <laughs> Surprisingly, on the official website, uh, there's no anecdotal stories that I could find, right? Um, what they do have is a fuck ton of terrible uh, EVPs with one that is a gunshot EVP. Um, and Brandon, it literally sounds like someone took their hand and smacked it into a microphone. Do you talk about the gift shop later on? Yes. Okay. Brandon, <laughs> there's a whole section called the co commodification of ghosts. Okay. There is a literal section called the commodification of ghosts. We will talk about it. It is a big deal and probably half this episode. John, I hate to say it, but you have to spend Patreon money in their gift shop somehow. I am not. <laughs> I am not. I refuse. 
they are charging too much. Actually, we'll that's get true. To that. Um, so I turned to the Linda Zinnerman book uh, for anecdotal stories because that's the only place that I could find like consistent ones. Um, so this is a direct quote from their from that book. Uh, one night after Sal and Cindy moved into their second floor rooms, they heard loud footsteps coming up the staircase from the, the first floor. Their initial thoughts didn't involve ghosts as the sh- footsteps sounded so real. They thought that perhaps someone in the town had seen the light on, lights on and called the police. Which I want to say, this is in Napanock, which is directly next to Ellenville. Zero fucking percent chance anyone called the police. Oh, that's true. Zero. That's fucking true. Zero fucking percent chance. I know the types of people who live in Napanock in Ellenville. There is an approximately one zero percent chance that anyone called would have called. It's the between police. Ellenville and Kerhonkson. No one's calling the police. Zero percent. For for the, you have to go a couple towns out before you're someone's going to call the cops. Yes. <laughs> no one. No one wants the cops to deal. Like like no one wants the cops anywhere near them, around there. That is just a fact. That is not going to happen. Zero percent chance. I'll give them the credit that they aren't from the area, but I know for a fact nobody fucking wants to involve cops in fucking anything in Napanock or Ellenville. If if cops get involved, it is because someone is literally being killed. <laughs> and even then, it's questionable. Yeah. Um. So... However, when they went to see if it was a cop on their staircase, they found no one. Which, I also want to point out, why the fuck didn't you lock your door? You lock your doors. Um, yeah. So, Sal searched the rest of the house and find that found that all the doors and windows were securely locked, and no other living person was in the building. Why would you even think that someone got into the house? Do you think that cops yeah. just have keys to every house in the, the town? They do. Because that's not how they it works. They just smash your door. They go, blah. Well, yeah, that's... No more well, door. that's what the shotgun's for. They cast shadow. Um, <laughs> so, this is a very standard tale, Brandon, to ramp things up, right? Yeah. Like, this is so bog standard. Homeowner hears something, decide to look for the source, find nothing, blah, 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 blah. Right? Like, boring. This is like a boring story. This is like the story that you come up with. Uh, when you're brainstorming ideas, like, yeah. no, this they put no effort into this. I could probably brain, we could probably workshop a better haunting story right now, right? Um, but we don't. We're not going to because we we have a lot of the episode left still. Um, so much of the activity takes place in the former bar area. One night, they placed a baby monitor in the large room. Then sat upstairs and listened. Very shortly after, they heard voices and movements, as if the bar was back in operation. Again, thinking it was living intruders, Sal came downstairs and unlocked the door of the bar. The moment he stepped inside, the sounds abruptly stopped. However, as soon as he closed and locked the door again, the sounds of voices and activity began again. Cindy then came downstairs and told the spirits to knock it off, and finally, there was peace and quiet. And... This is like literally a joke from like a scary like sc- a scary movie movie. Yeah. Like like I feel like I've seen this joke in a movie before. This exact joke. <laughs> um but but like this story is also questionable because I don't see it repeated anywhere and there's no recording of the activity on their website, which okay. Yeah. Has way dumber shit on it, right? Um that being said, this could have been between 2005 and 2009, which is when Linda's book was published. Um, so the availability of recording equipment would have rapidly changed in this window. But I still had a digital camera in 2005. So, like, yeah. I had a digital camera and I was 14. So, like, if you're if you're trying to open a, a hotel, how do you not have a fucking digital camera to take pictures of shit? Yeah. Whatever. I had one, too. It Whatever. was a... Panasonic something. Yeah. So, like, whatever. Whatever. Now, there's additional stories of oblong toys balancing unnaturally. No photos, by the way. Oh, cool. Um, Your standard cold spots, your rarer hot spots, and the smell of cigar smoke. And, Brandon, you've been in places in, uh, in Ulster County that allowed smoking at one point, right? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. Also... It's still there. The, the things you just said... It's yeah. bad insulation. If you have, if there's cold spots, fewer hot spots, and you can smell smoke. If someone's smoking outside, it'll go through the walls. Yeah, 
They have bad it's insulation. It's just a shitty. It's just a shitty house. It's yeah. That's all it is. It's just a shitty building. Nothing in there is like anything other. Like even the oblong toy thing. It could just be that the fucking floor is ruined. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get that cigar smoke out. No. It's it's. I've been in, in pla- like like I've been in places in Ulster County, and I can you can still smell it. Yeah. Like it's not like. It's been well over a decade since uh, you can smoke legally in like a lot of places in New York, and the places that allowed it still smell the high heaven. Yeah, it's just it's just it is that's how it is. That's it. I, people don't realize how much people smoked in the Hudson Valley. <laughs> um, so the phenomena continues. Doors appear to rattle, open, radio dials spin, clocks sound the hour despite lack of clocks. Phones ring that aren't there, et cetera. You know, the, the, the stupid fucking normal shit. Um, specific rooms also have associated phenomenon. Uh, the secret room behind the trap door that held the bootleg booze gives people a sense of fear and panic, making them flee. Uh, the room that was previously a brothel, apparently, uh, is said to make women, which is Linda's descriptor, so I don't know anything about, like, what that means specifically, feel disoriented, um, as though the floor was moving. Now, there are also named ghosts that they have. Brandon. Okay. Um, and they're apparently uh, occupying this hotel rent free, right? Uh, there's a ghost cat named Sweet Thing. Okay, good name for uh, a cat, I guess. It is. Uh, it was said to that said to inhabit the the building. Um, I think it was Sal's. One of the rare uh, ghost animals. Huh? It's it's rare to have it, a ghost animal. Ghost cats aren't that rare. True. Ghost, ghost dogs cats are pretty rare. Ghost dogs are rare. Ghost dogs are ghost rare. Ghost cats are yeah. Ghost cats are super common. Um, because some cats just act like ghosts. Yeah, that's just it. <laughs> um, I think it was Sal's, and it died in a place that they called Claire's room. Um, which is a fucked up story. So Claire's room is named Claire's room. Because apparently a psychic told them that a pregnant woman uh, killed herself in her room after her baby daddy didn't want to raise the child. And that's why it's called Claire's Room. And the woman oh, was named Claire. Oh, fun. I'll let you take a guess and see if there was, like, do you think that that was ever, that there's any evidence pointing to that? I don't because think Because your answer there is, <laughs> there isn't, because the ghost hunters looked at it and they said they couldn't find anything about the Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, jeez. So, yeah, the cat has apparently been captured on videos multiple times. Um, I saw the video. It doesn't look like anything. Okay. So we're just gonna leave it at that. Um, there's also a piano man and not Billy Joel. Okay. Who's said to inhabit the, uh, hotel in dapper clothes and be visible, uh, on the approach to the third floor. Even in the absence of the piano, it's said that guests have been, have heard him play Interestingly or not, there was also said to be a poor elderly man who lived in the hotel who would play the piano for money. Although, once again, no external sources to verify. Oh, just cool. the just the 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 words and lovely thoughts of people uh, from from the Shanley Hotel. Yeah. Um. Other ghosts are said to include Frank, the Bordello bodyguard. Cool. Joe, a mafia hitman, a whistling man. A whole mess of children and a serial killer. Sweet, Frank, also known Which, as the ghost with the bluest balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say though, there are actually serial killer. There have been serial killers in Ulster County, but I yep. don't think that they stayed at the Shanley Hotel. Probably um, not. Our our serial killers are pretty fucked up too. Actually, I don't want to talk about them, but if you want to see, if you if you are interested in terrible terrible look up some Ulster County serial killers because they're not good no. they're real bad so Brandon you jumped the gun on me oh okay but oh oh oh, but, oh, oh right. I'm reading your part okay oh. yeah so this is my favorite part of the whole story they have absolutely commodified ghost hunting as you mentioned before now 
this is the thing that made the the segment as long as it is. That's that's why we're currently at an hour and forty minutes because I wanted to talk about all the the lead up to this so we can dissect why this is the most insane fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. It's fucking so, wild. So well, not it's not the most insane, but this is this is up there in terms of like what the fuckery. Um. So it's I look I went to try to book a room and like just like drove 70 miles an hour to a brick wall of what the fuck yes so okay i saw the private investigation section on the website that was the thing that made me go wait a second (laughs) wait a second i thought you were a hotel yeah so i needed to dig in now brandon the way that it works is they have two packages okay okay one is the public investigation all right so in the public investigation depending on the room it will run you between 238 to 750 dollars uh-huh right bearing in mind these are what are known as public ghost hunts oh wait how's that you're not spending you're not spending the night in the hotel by yourself there's a chance that someone oh, else is Jesus there. Jesus Christ. Running parallel ghost hunts while you're there. And now, Brandon, oh, I don't think I have to explain to you why that's a bad idea. Yeah. Because it is like the definition of sound contamination um, and everything contamination. Uh, so, $750 is what's going to run you for the. Uh, for the 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 public ghost hunting, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. At, at most, private investigations. However, so, so uh, I just want to make this clear. What I'm realizing now clear is that you cannot book a room to stay in. You can, however, no. book a private ghost hunt, which will allow you to be the only person to be able to use a specific room. You can also... No, no, okay, okay. Private ghost hunts lock down the hotel for you. Oh, the whole hotel? Yes. Gotcha. Public ghost hunts... Do not. You and other people, right? Okay. So a public ghost hunt, you can you can get a room, but other people can also get other rooms. Private ghost hunt, you can get a room, and it's just you. I think that's how I understand it. It's very, 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 very poorly described on their website. Um, So... Private investigations, Brandon, will run you, at minimum, $499 for seven people Monday through Wednesday. Okay? Yep. It increases steadily until Saturday, where it's $899 for a single night (laughs) from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. for seven people. And that's in in shitty-ass rooms. Okay? Additionally... If you have more than seven people, it goes at a cost for $75 a person on regular nights and $100 for some reason on Saturday nights. Uh Uh-huh. Even though the hotel is supposedly already in your name, like you're the only one there, it costs somehow more to have extra people there for some reason. Whatever. And as I mentioned, check out Firm 10 a.m. And as you said before hourly basis of $150 an hour if you stay past 10 a.m. <laughs> yep. Which is fucking insane in the Hudson Valley. Because that'll that's like that is like two days in some hotels in the Hudson Valley. Yeah, that that's almost like the room rate for like a residence in. Yes. I feel like uh, just on like a Wednesday or whatever. It's, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Private events, Brandon, which once again I don't know what the fucking distinction is, will run you at a maximum of seventeen hundred dollars on Saturday nights. <laughs> oh. Seventeen hundred dollars to to have a private event. And Brandon, I don't fucking know what a private event is. It's it's so, so it, vague, it almost seems like it's up to the hotel staff at the time. Probably. Because, okay, and there's other things too here. So you have to to book, 
for a private investigation, you have to send them an email to bookings at the Haunted Shenley Hotel or call them at, and I'm going to just read their number off because it's in public, 845-217-3112. Um, there are no refunds. <laughs> And a deposit of $200 is required at the time of booking. If an event is postponed within 30, uh, 30 of an event date. I imagine which, they mean days. I imagine they mean days. A $200 rescheduling fee will be charged. The balance is due 30 days prior to the event. All deposits are non-refundable and non-transferable. Payment plans are available. <laughs> I, I do want to make payment. There is a, there is an upside. Continental and breakfast is included. Yes. Which for now, let's get into let's get into the set of rules. Oh, and for oh, use by of the way, various paranormal equipment. Yes, we're going to talk about that too. That's another thing. Um, the month of October is booked right now, which is fucking wild, and I is yes. even crazier that I haven't heard of this before you told me about it. Yeah, yeah, and you're even closer to it than I am right now. It's got to be, oh god, what it's to, it's 35 minutes away. So I from intentionally you. didn't do any research outside of the one video you put in in Discord, Brandon. It's I know how far away it is from you. It's 35 minutes because it's 20 minutes from my house to Kingston. Oh, oh no, I, I looked up where it is from, on a map. But yeah, what I mean is I didn't put punch it in YouTube. If it's booked full, that means it has to be ghost hunters traveling from out of state. Yes. Is where this business yes. is because I've never fucking heard of it, and no one, yeah. no, I don't know anyone local that knows about it either because no, I don't know about it. I okay, so so it has I'll, to I'll be tell you like something. out of staters or at least people from like outside the county paying that much money to go to that fucking hotel. So I did a fishing experiment, okay, on Facebook, and I sent a message out. Hey, Rhonda Valley folks. Does, that, does the Hotel Shanley mean anything to you? No Googling. I only got two responses. One of them was my mom, who posted an emoji of a ghost. And then I asked her if that was really the thing. And she just told me about the fact that they run seances and spirit things. Okay, so she heard, she, she's heard. So she heard yeah. about it after the fact. My mom, by the way, has been living in the area since her childhood, and she graduated from Monot Valley in 1985, I think. It's, I'm more impressed so, to know when your mom graduated. I know when my, uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, whatever. I, I know I, well, because I, I also know because my mom gave birth to me at 25, yeah. So when I was 25, it was like an even so, number. Just scrolling through YouTube, there's a fuck ton. So like, oh yeah, it's, there is. It's a popular a ghost hunter. It is. It's spot. bafflingly popular, and I don't get it. I don't understand. Um, and then the other, we had another. Per I had another person who messaged us, who's someone we knew from, uh, from high school, yeah. who did the same thing. They moved to Napanock, and they said, "Oh, there's like they run seances and whatever." Nobody, the nobody that I know. The most expensive seance. It's fucking yes. wild. That's a fact. I know buildings so, where people got killed in. You can, I'll try, give me 50 bucks. I'll take well, you Brandon, there. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's no guarantee that anyone was ever killed in this building. Oh, I can guarantee that on some buildings. Give me $50, yeah, I know. Ghost Hunters. <laughs> Give me $50. I'll make sure someone died yeah. in this building. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the private investigation page, Brandon, has the following rules, and I'm copying this directly from... This is exactly from the webpage. You read some of them already. One, the, Sh the Shanley Hotel can host up to 34 guests. Two, arrival time is 6 p.m., no early check-ins, all caps. And all guests must vacate by 10 a.m. the following day. Following is capitalized. Should you wish to have a later va later vacate time, that is the sentence, <laughs> should you wish to have a later vacate time, this can be arranged and the additional charge is $150 per hour. The hotel has Wi-Fi available. <laughs> a staff member from the Shanley Hotel will be on site, S-I-G-H-T, 
for fire and insurance regulations. It will provide your team with a history of the hotel and a staff-led investigation from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. if requested. Ouija boards are allowed, all caps for the R. No one under no one under the age of 18 are permitted to be on site. Everyone has to complete a waiver. No smoking, saging, smudging, incense, or candle burning is permitted inside the hotel. I saw a video in which there was absolutely a candle being burned. <laughs> um, no drugs or alcohol permitted. No one under the influence of drugs or alcohol permitted. No weapons of any kind allowed on the premises. Price includes snacks, soda, bottled water, coffee, and continental breakfast. Outside food may be brought in. Cleanup will be responsibility of guests. They don't even clean up and after the guests. No, they don't. Cheap it's bastards. not a hotel, Brandon. You're That's because it's not a hotel. Oh. It's a place that they let people go in, walk around, scream, and be dumbasses, and then sleep in a bed for a few hours and then force them out. <sighs> but Brandon, there's even more rules. There's more uh, direct interaction for the, the public investigation stuff. Okay. Um, there's a four-hour structured staff-led paranormal activities, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. See product description. Couldn't find that product description, by the way. <laughs> um, some ghost hunting equipment is available for limited use. Limited availability, as you mentioned before. We do highly recommend to bring your own recording devices, i.e. digital recorders, phones. Also, paranormal equipment is available for purchase in our gift shop. Oh. They have a fucking <laughs> gift shop, Brandon. I know. Oh, uh, do you go over the gift shop stuff? We're gonna get into that uh, in a second. So, free time is available at the completion of staff-led investigation. This allows you to hunt and to explore in your own designated areas. I have no idea what the fuck that means in terms of designated areas. So, they, as we mentioned... I watched in the video that you put on the Discord, there are a couple doors that I think are, say, like, staff only or something like that. Well, there's a quote-unquote witch's room that they're not allowed into, which I... Th so, you know how I said I have a theory about where the win room with the broken windows is? Um. I think that's the witch's <laughs> room, because they just don't feel like fixing it. The, um, we won't fix it, so you can't go in there. Okay. So, Brandon. The contents of this, wish, this, this gift shop are insane. The first thing on the gift, like, so go to the gift shop, Brandon. Yep, I'm on the website. I'm, 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 you and I are going to we're gonna have a conversation about this gift there shop. There is one item um, mm -hmm. that, well, that looks fun to actually buy. I, I also want to point out that there's two pages worth of stuff. Oh, wait. Next page. Yeah. Um, oh. Really? That? Okay. Yeah. So, so Okay. Brandon, the first thing on the on the site, the very first thing on the gift shop at the time of recording, is the headstone trigger device with metal pan. Now, Brandon, <sighs> I was thinking about what this is because I, I can't tell what it is because this description's worthless. I know what it is. I think I figured out what it is. Uh-huh. And I think it's a water detector. Oh that yeah. you fill the you fill yeah. the pan with water. And then you put, like, a, what is, like, literally, like, a cost-nothing detector above it. And then if it dips into the water, it'll make a noise. Yeah. And I'm, like... Headstone trigger device, just so people know, like, they have normal ghost hunting things, but done up in a theme. So in this case, yes. the water detector is in the shape of a headstone. Yes. So it's not that... It, it's use isn't for headstones. It's in the shape no, of a headstone. No. It's just in the shape of the headstone. Yep. Um, so, what about a $125 REM pod called Hang on. the you, Rip you see, it's REM pod? It's a $120 pod. metal dog food uh, fucking dish is the, the first one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the first. I mean, how much does a water detector, like, water sensor trigger cost? Uh, you could probably... Build this for like fifteen dollars. Well, let's let's just assume they went to let's assume that they went to Amazon and bought one. Brandon, it costs twelve dollars for a, a floor water sensor from Amazon right now. Yeah, twelve bucks. 
I literally just went on Amazon. Floor sensor for flood and leak, six feet. Twelve bucks. Yeah. It, it would be cheaper to just buy that and use that. So And more useful because like, it's got a longer lead on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, super useful. They're REM pod. And it plugs in so you don't have to worry about batteries. Yeah. They're REM pod. So do you know what a... Also in the shape of a headstone. Uh, is the mm-hmm. REM pod the... Oh, God. I was just watching a video where they were using REM pods. Is that so, the uh, almost a spirit box, but not... Oh, it's it's uh, proximity. No. Right? Yeah. So we... Uh, back last year, uh, one of the listeners, Clay... Um, and I, we did a, a show for a bit. I had to stop because of like personal obligations. Um, but we did a show called Paranormal Rage where we would show each other videos of ghost hunters doing shit. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, one of the most common things that showed up on these, in addition to the spirit box and of, of, of phone app called Necrophonic, which, I'm working on an episode that's just about EVPs because, well, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be on this podcast. It's going to be on the YouTube. I think I'm going to make a fully oh, edited, dope. fully like, full serious thing because I have the we have the the spirit box and I want to like tear that down on camera. Yeah, because we did it as like a stream, but I want something that is like for like in perpetuity, per- in perpetuity. Like yeah. this is how insane all this is. Um. A REM pod, Brandon, is just a theremin that's not fully Uh, completed. That's dumb. Yeah. You know how much costs for a theremin kit? No, probably not. $17. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Okay. And that's a 3D printed shell. Yeah. So, and then they also have a REM pod... That's a creepy doll head that has light up red eyes. Yeah. Which is a thing. Yeah, but a much better value for only $80. Yes, yes. Um, They sell a piece of cardboard for $16, which is the pendulum board. Yep, yep, um, yep. I assume it's a piece of cardboard. I don't think, I don't, it might be, it might be wood or plastic. I'm not sure. Um, Regardless, it's, oh wait. Customized and manufactured by Get Haunted. Find us at gethaunted.com. 2020 AD. Made with love, honor, and pride for the incredibly haunted Stanley Ho- Shanley Hotel. That is what it says on the back of it. <sighs> I think it's just laser cut. Yeah. Um, so they also sell the Flux 2 for response $200, devices. which yes. is wild. Now... I'm going to go on Amazon right now, and we're going to live Google this. It's we're 3D gonna live printed. Amazon this. Yes. Uh, Flux 2. We're doing a quick Google search, or a quick Amazon search. And my fucking computer's slow. <laughs> All right, whatever. Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't type that in right. I don't Actually, think it's that oh, wow. much. They're, I'm just looking them up. They're all shitty 3D printed. Uh, oh yeah, like ninety percent of ninety percent of like things that are like ghost hunting is shitty 3D, 3D prints. Yeah. It's just shitty 3D printed. Yeah. Um, so what a flex response device is. <sighs> all right. So like, there's a thermometer, and it mm-hmm. and it lights up. Red if the temperature goes up, or green if the temperature goes down. And then also, it's a thing with two lights. And then also, the mm-hmm. lights kind of randomly light up, and that could mean either a positive or negative response to, like, a yes or no question, or something is moving towards or away from it, or the mm-hmm. temperature is changing, or yep. the distance of something else. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it means uh, nothing. Yeah. It literally means nothing. It is a worthless tool. It has so many possible things that it could be, it's worthless. <laughs> if you have a tool that does that many things, it's fucking useless because you don't know what you're actually measuring. Yeah. Like it's it, not science. <laughs> no. Oh shit. 
Um, they also sell something called the. Sh- they sell something called Shanley Morgue Dirt Keychain, and oh yeah, so they they claim that their the basement had like dead bodies in it at one point, which I couldn't find any verification of. Um, of course. Um, they also sell a SB Seven T, which is the you know the thing that I bought the the spirit box. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I bought. Uh, but I bought a newer version of that. Um. And I think that I got it cheaper than that. Because <laughs> they're selling it for a price that I think I beat in terms of, like, on an a- a eBay store. Um, but whatever. Uh, they also sell K2 meters. They sell shot glasses. Um, they sell a t-shirt that says, I'm a paranormal investigator. If you see me running, try to keep up. I will say the only thing I see in the gift shop that is, like, pretty cool is the wine glass. The wine glass? Yeah, yeah. So there's a wine glass, and it, it's a picture of a pumpkin, and on it it says, let's get smashed for $12. Well, that you can probably... I could probably ask my, my sister to make you one of those for, like, two bucks. Yeah. Because she has a cricket. Oh, and they also have what they call a vibration-activated light sphere. <laughs> Brandon, that was the last one I was going to talk about. Oh, is- <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you know what that is, right? So I what watched, do you think that is? I watched a video of a haunted house, and they kept mm-hmm. calling it the cat ball. Yes, <laughs> because that's exactly what it fucking is. <laughs> and I want to point something out. If you click on it and it goes to bulk pricing, buy two or above and get 25% off. Wow, what a deal. Wow. You get 25% off, uh, each one of these being 12 fucking dollars. Yeah. And twenty five percent off twelve dollars, uh, twenty four dollars would be. Also, how is two bulk price? They need to learn what bulk is. Yeah, they don't know what fucking bulk bulk is. Um. Regardless, so I want to point out, I went on Chewy to look it up. <laughs> yeah. It retails for six dollars for two. Oh, cool margins. Yeah. So they're selling it at a, uh, they're selling it for, what like six dollars for two four times for 12 to one four so times like a four hundred yeah, so like f- yeah yeah they they they're selling it four times more expensive and Brandon once again I want to point out Walmart is literally right there <laughs> less than a five minute walk yeah and they will have oh you can Walmart they will have it Walmart will have it Walmart might actually have some of the other devices in like the hardware yes. section too <laughs> that's so, yes they might that's so fucking funny you can literally walk to Walmart and buy some of this shit for pennies on the dollar <laughs> um the ghost probably bullshit but man is this this place haunted by the spirit of capitalism it is it's Oh, God. The, they're available on site from the gift shop for people who show up. So my guess is, like, after a certain point, after you've spent, you know, over $2,000 for your private event your private event and some, like, ghost hunting equipment that you bought on site, you're going to find oh, a ghost amount- because you have to find a ghost at that point. Yes. Well, I mean, the fact that you have to spend so much to do a ghost hunt, you're already going to find a ghost because it's a, it's a sunk cost fallacy. Yeah. You are going, you are going to, you're going to see stuff, hear stuff, think stuff because you have put so much fucking money into this endeavor <laughs> that no matter, like, you have to see something. <laughs> Because if you don't see something, you just wasted all your fucking money <laughs> on a fucking shitty hotel in Napanock, New York. <laughs> if the ghosts don't scare you, your debt will. <laughs> honestly, honestly, some parts of that uh, of Napanock just like Napanock, some parts of Napanock and just that general part of the county terrify me because of some of the rednecks that are out there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and that's just a fact. <laughs> um, And I, I do want to take a moment to read the waiver. I, I found a video where they, like, I took a screen grab from a video where they were reading the waiver. Yeah. Um, This is the waiver as it's written. I also, okay, so indemnity agreement. 
I also agree to indemnify and hold, all caps, the Haunted Shanley Hotel, their successors, uh, and, ass- and assigns, harmless in all caps, from any from all claims, actions, suits, procedures, costs, expenses, damages, and liabilities that they that may be associated by anyone because of my participation in any activity such as tours or events of all types with the haunted Stanley Hotel thereof, whether as a volunteer or a guest paying a, a fee. I think that's one sentence. Uh, you are quick scan correct. Yeah, that's one sentence. Yeah, that is a single sentence. Um. Which it also uh, would never fucking hold up in court because no, they, even though they use indemnify and uh, words like that, that is not legal language. No, no. And also, you don't, you don't. Just by signing a thing does not mean you are immediately waived of anything that happens to you. No. If the fucking building collapses, the person who's responsible for maintaining that building is still responsible. <laughs> um. So, acknowledgement of understanding. Uh, With intent to be legally bound hereby, I have read this waiver of liability, assumption of risk, and indemnity agreement fully and understand its terms and understand I am giving up all substantial rights, including my right to sue, which you cannot do. (laughs) I'm like 90% sure you can't do that because this is not like, 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 I don't think that this pr- like I think if you have if you're giving up your right to sue you pretty much need like a notary at that point. I, there's, there's there's a so this, I, I, this, I I I don't think you'll be surprised to hear this but as someone actually you don't need, I read a lot of like contracts and legal stuff like mm-hmm. on a day-to-day basis. I don't think I need that experience reading this. This wasn't written by a lawyer <laughs> or anyone <laughs> In the legal field. So I just want to take a second. Um, I'm looking up what a usual waiver of like, like right to sue. This doesn't read like like, a, like a, even just a normal waiver of anything. Somebody just knows that like the word liability and like indemn mm-hmm. like someone knows those words and just put them into a thing that they thought would read like an actual waiver. This is clearly not fucking uh, th- this. Yeah. Uh, it's just not yeah. good. I mean, it's it's also like questionable in a lot of times. Like giving up like the notion of giving up your right to sue. Like I yeah. don't So they say I, I don't I, I'm giving up all rights, including my right to sue. I acknowledge that I am signing this agreement freely and voluntarily and intent by they also don't use words right. They the words are wrong. They're they're not using full like true grammar like their grammar's terrible. Right. Yeah, and intent like, is my signature to be complete and unconditional release of all liability to the greatest extent allowed by law. Li- That's not a thing. Also, they words did words bad. By signing this waiver, I agree that you have the right to use any story, photos, video, and or audio from or about the Shanley Hotel that was p- that we post on any website, social network or share with you for advertising purposes. This is like uh they're trying to get you to do free advertising for them and also are trying mm-hmm. to say you're they're not liable for anything that happens okay. which kind of comes off as like they know the buildings in disrepair and mm-hmm. and don't want to get in trouble for not fixing it. But that's yeah. not a thing. That that's not that that doesn't like get you off, right? So, um just to like take a second, this is uh Okay, so here's here's an example of a waiver from right to sue. Um by signing this document, I acknowledge that if anyone is hurt or property damaged during my participation in this activity, I may be found by a court of law to have waived my or the minor participants right to maintain a lawsuit against shockwave or any releases on the basis of any claim, uh, which I have released them herein. I have sufficient opportunity to read this, this document and have read and understood it and agree to be bound by its terms. Um, so you can, you can write away, like get away your right to sue, but like give away, waiver your right to sue, but still it's like the language is not, it's weird, right? How one of them like it's weird language. That grammar was like great and to- like 
that uh, is clear and easy to understand and grammatically fine, you know, for a legal mm-hmm. document. And then the other one, not so much. <laughs> yeah, and and even then, there's like, even if you, uh, even if you waive your right to sue, there's even still like. That doesn't yeah. mean you're not protected. Uh, while signing, the, while signing the waiver reduces an injured party's legal options, it does not prevent you. Does not always prevent you from filing a personal injury claim. Yeah, like you can still file a claim, but whatever. Regardless, I don't think an actual lawyer wrote this. Or no. if they did, they didn't give it. They didn't give a shit. I think if um, a, a lawyer that they didn't even pay happened to scan this by accident in a bar, he would just punch whoever gave it to him. Pretty much. <laughs> this is, like, wildly bad. Actually, so, like, the, it's scary. So reading this waiver is scary because it kind of shows their intent cool. to, like, their knowledge that it, it is, like, inherent danger in, like, the structure yes. that is the hotel. And they don't want to yes. be, like, on the hook for it. This is the scariest part of the Shanley Hotel. This it waiver. It is, because... Because there is, it like, I mean, obviously, we don't know this, right? Once again, this is us speculating. This is not evidence that they did this or did anything wrong. You know, no, this is not. but if someone got hurt there, I could definitely see that making its way into court. Like, it- <laughs> Yes. I could, it, there's, they, I, here's what I'll say. I, I think, think the Shanley Hotel should, should retain a lawyer. They should retain a lawyer. And I also think that in the event (coughs) that they did have a lawyer and they saw this paper, they would go, don't do this. Yes. (laughs) Like, this is, this does not help you. (laughs) Yes. I I don't, I don't know. We're not, we're not legal experts, obviously. We're not anything. It's just, to us, these lay people, this is just like, what the fuck am I even reading? Um, so, Brandon... I think it's kind of obvious that neither of us think this is particularly real, particularly because of the fact that neither of us have heard of this yeah. before now. Um, and we're both kind of, we know enough people who are into this kind of stuff, and we are enough into this stuff that it's like, I would have heard about this at some point. And as I mentioned before, I did reach out to like my friends on Facebook, and I have a lot of Facebook friends that went to Rondo, and nobody fucking knew anything about this. Um, not like, meaningfully at least yeah but what i can say is as far as i can tell the origin of most stories begin in 2005 with sal's purchase of the property and i can't find any mention of the hotel and anything but travel guides and hotel listings prior to 2005 or like the articles that include james shanley in specific yeah um which makes me think sal fabricated the ghost parts or not necessarily fabricated um he might believe in the ghost parts but I think they originate from Sal, regardless. Yeah. Because right? because we can't we can't say that they're a scam or shamming people, right? Um, because that's that's not legally protected. What we can say is we think that that originates from them. Yeah. Right. Um. Because once again, we're not making any broad claims. We're just saying what we think about this. Only reason I'm getting like I'm kind of anxious about this is because I don't want them to sue us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think we've I don't think we've said anything that's necessarily not well, just based on what we've I, read I think or the, seen. The origins of this ghost seem suspicious, and I don't yes feel personally that the value of the packages being offered is really there. <laughs> that being said, somebody might, <laughs> and if somebody thinks that that's okay, that's fine for them, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I, uh, things that I uh, of greater value to spend money on. Yes, there are a lot of things you could spend money on. Do you know how many fucking cat value. toys you could get from Walmart and stand in so front many. of the Shanley Hotel and sell at half price and still be making twice as much <laughs> as you paid? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> um, Again, so, I'm not saying anyone should do that. <laughs> <laughs> But you can double your so, money and save someone half of theirs. 
So most of the EVPs on the site also have no context, yeah. right? They don't have like any video associated with them. We don't know what type of app they're using. We don't know what type of tool they're using. We don't know anything, right? Um, the hotel claims that uh, the the hotel claims that they don't rig any supernatural events. I'm not going to say anything the other to the other extent of that. Yeah. But they are supplying the tools. So, whatever you think. I mean, you're supplying not, the not, tools. I can see, like, where the power enters the building. I bet, whoa, there might be some extra, uh, uh, you know, EMF activity around there. Also, if smoking or the smell of tobacco smoke is, you know, a sign of a haunt at disrepaired hotel with poor insulation, I'm going to guess a guy walking past on a, the sidewalk smoking, they'll, they'll, someone yeah. could claim would be a hit for a ghost event. Yeah. Um, however, like I said, for some reason, people claim the hotel is insanely haunted. One of the most haunted in the New York State, according to Exploring with Josh, uh, who, of course, has a hunting video of it, um, as being the most haunted in the country. Um, the explanation, though, I think is pretty simple for why it's so popular. And that's ghost hunters. Because it turns out, Brandon... The Shanley Hotel was the subject of the 144th episode of Ghost Hunters, oh. Season 7, Episode 17, Well, well of that. Horrors. The episode aired October 5th, 2011, and has the best ratings of any episode of that season, clocking oh, in at wow. 1.964 million viewers. That Watching the episode... Hmm? Oh, no, I was going to say, that makes my thought that these are people coming from out of the area to check it out. Seems plausible. <laughs> That's what I mean. I, I'm like ninety percent sure that most. I I don't. I think most of their business comes from out of state. If I'm going to be honest. Um. So regardless, I I don't know. We don't know. Once again, we're not trying to say anything about the business. We're just saying. We're just telling you the things that we just say that I found with reading stuff. If there's dots you're trying to connect, a few of them aren't that far apart. <laughs> so. Um, watching the episode, they immediately tell the story about the kid getting hit and killed, uh -huh. and they call them Jonathan, right? Um, once again, we know that the kid didn't die. We know the kid's name wasn't Jonathan. Uh, but that being said, I'm pretty sure that the hotel, in particular Sal, told them about this before they got there. So they're just return like re recounting it. Yeah. Um, Sal's featured prominently in the episode. And describes the supposed ghostly activity. Um, uh, but yeah, once again, no corroboration of the, the the pregnant woman who killed herself, supposedly. There's supposedly like three suicides in the hotel. None of them are like on record whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but my favorite part of the episode, Brandon, is how they constantly say how all the locals know about the hotel. No. Despite the fact that you and I... I think would be considered locals yeah. and we've never fucking heard of it. <laughs> My mom passed by the, the hotel on her way to work for multiple years. <laughs> I was living I was living at my parents' house while my mom was passing this place when the ghost hunters were there. We were going to school for eight years, like just down the street. My college architecture final like was in Warsing, which is just right there like you know and and uh that's why i was at the dunkin donuts right there and, and i spent a yep. lot of time going past that that yes it, it, nobody it somehow once has ever never mentioned heard it. <laughs> somehow it's never come up in conversation i don't know how um <sighs> so there's a quote in the episode amy this is a creepy street it's like dead people are so scared of the building no it's Brit, it's the <laughs> That's because it's a Napa knock. <laughs> it's Napa. <laughs> Brit, the locals here, when they're walking down the street, when they get to this hotel, they cross the street. The lore is so great, you always try to avoid it. Bullshit. <laughs> That's bullshit. Ain't nobody crossing the street. <laughs> Nobody's fucking crossing that street. No, no one gives a shit. No, what? Nobody knows or cares about it. Nobody gives a shit. I can guarantee and not you, only like, that, all the locals are just like, when's this guy going to fix the fucking hotel? Like, that's their, probably their attitude. Yeah. Like, this thing looks like that's, shit. That's, they're probably like, God, that's so fucking hideous. Yeah. 
Because, like, it is. It's, like, the, 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 like, roof is, like, rotting. Yeah, it's, it seems dangerously, uh, 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 in dis- actually, if people are crossing the streets, because they're probably afraid some shit's gonna break off the damn building. Like, yeah, it's in the in, like, like it. It, it legitimately, it legitimately looks rotten. Like, yeah. like the 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 roof of the the enclosed roof. So they have like an enclosed porch, and it looks rotten. But <clears throat> whatever. Given given that the month of October is booked, I mean, you can definitely ballpark how much they're taking in. You, they're definitely taking in enough to fix the fucking. <laughs> roof the floors yes. the windows that well, are especially shattered. especially since it like basically runs no- it costs them nothing there's no like no operating cost really especially like if it's ghost hunts how much like electricity are you really using to keep the lights on like yeah. cuz you do that shit in the dark i mean i think the person who owns the place lives there but that's about it um there's like one room that's actually nice yeah <laughs> um so also I want to point out that this area the, this part of the county if you don't have a car you're fucked so nobody's going to be walking around on that street at night oh no no there's zero chance zero fucking chance but whatever regardless you need a car to drive around that part of the county that's just a statement of fact um, so the phenomena that appeared in the episode include somebody walking in front of the window okay uh, it yep uh, a rolling ball, which was kicked by Jason. Well water ripple- rippling. Uh-huh. Whispering uh, that Haley Hawes, who's Jason's daughter, heard. And whispering on an EVP saying, who's that guy? To the team's credit, the only s- evidence they showed was the terrible EVP. Yeah. I was never and as I mentioned EVPs. before, they looked into the story of suicides and once again determined they had no held no water and said that you shouldn't trust psychics. When it comes to stuff like that. No. Now, Brandon, I just realized I forgot to put something in the copy that's very important. What's that? After Sal died in 2017, the building was condemned. (laughs) I've been saying that it looks bad. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It was condemned. That's the word, not evicted. Condemned was the word I was using improperly earlier, by the way. Um, it was condemned. That makes after sense. A, after a, it was, the hotel was condemned and closed after a time of mixed reviews and poor management. 2018, the hotels reopened under new management. Now, Brandon, <clears throat> I dug and looked for some reviews of the Shanley Hotel from before this condem- condemnation. Okay. And before I leave you on this episode, I want to read these reviews. These are available Free, like publicly on the oh, internet. Oh, I'm before, not fabricating any of these. Before you go into this, can I talk about the fucking psychic from that video you shared real quick? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that video really quick. Yeah. So like, it's some ghost hunter kids that dress like I did in high school, kind of or whatever. And um, uh, it's yeah. I know who you're. I know. I forget who their their names blonde, are. But blonde like, kid and uh, dark hair kid. And um, they yeah. have a medium with them who has a Ouija board on a table. And the, here's how, how here's the setup. Uh, I want to point out that this medium, I think, is the medium that's associated with the hotel. Oh, with the Shanley Hotel? So yes, this guy. I think they are. He's alone on one side of a table and nobody's around him. So he's using the Ouija mm-hmm. board. I've never seen anyone use it well, all alone. And he's just well, wiggling the fucking playing chat. Yeah. Well, the the reason he's using it is all alone is because the kids are afraid to use the Ouija board. That's the reason. I've come they really. say it in the video. They're afraid to use the Ouija board, but it's that's a the toy. reason. It's look. Yes, we know it's like, made by Hasbro. Know, the year was. It's a Hasbro. Hasbro invented it. Anyway, he's like wiggling yeah. it back and forth alone. The plan chat, and they're asking it questions, and then he just like he's like oh, it's like he just slides. He's like yes. No, and they'll ask a question, and you're just, like, real quick, like, hits all the letters for a word to spell it. It's the craziest, most bullshit thing I've ever seen. It was wild to watch. And then they, it like... It was. Well, so, they, it's worse, because they, <laughs> they literally say, that's weird, I've never seen anyone do something like that. Yeah, they even point out the bullshit way to use a Ouija board. 
Oh, gosh. And then they, like, yeah. fake dig a hole in the basement for some reason to try to, like, ghosts don't like it when you dig, I guess. I yeah. That, that, it Well, the, the other thing, too, is, um, what else? Uh, they are, like, they had, like, there was, like, a ball that, like, rolled around in a weird way. Um, all sorts of shit yeah, like that. But also on a building... Um, that has been condemned. I wouldn't necessarily think the flooring might be perfectly even where a ball yeah. would roll in a predictable manner. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. yeah. So like, yeah. So like, like, it's 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 stuff. Um, Sam and Colby is the name of the the ghost oh, okay. hunters who were on that video, or the like YouTubers that were on the video. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. I mean, I will say this, um, you know what's the people wild who believe is, in it. Is now knowing how much they spent to make the fucking video. <laughs> they spent that money. That was not free. That was not you free. You know it wasn't and free. And it was only people they brought with them. So we can guess that that would have been a private event. With at least, mm -hmm. there was like four of them plus a medium, so five people. So they're inching closer to the seven person cost of the uh, private. Yeah. Uh, so that's. I mean, it, it's probably close. They probably played close to like 600, something like that. Yeah. A as a good guess. Um, I do want to point out that the people who believe in ghosts and like. All that stuff. They have fun with it, it seems like. If you get a lot out of it, I guess. I still don't like... Yeah, but, like, I mean, if we're going to... If we're coming down on this in terms of, like, skepticism and, like, you know, like a bit, like, reasonability <coughs> of this being haunted and, like, all that stuff, I'd put it pretty low on my score. Yeah. Card. I still, like... Um, if we're looking at... So, if I was to try to do something similar where I'd get an event where I would maybe like have spooks and scares similar to maybe someone that believed in ghosts does at the Shanley. I would probably say like, I would have to compare the price of the Shanley to the price of like the headless horseman or like a haunted mm -hmm. house. And I think the value of the haunted house would be uh, yeah, greater. I mean, also there's I mean, beer and the Shanley won't yeah. let you drink. <laughs> it, it would, it seems like, I, I mean, but you know, this is our opinion, right? Yeah. Um, it seems like a haunted hotel. It, it seemed like it seems like going to to haunted, an understaffed haunted, haunted house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of yeah the vibe that kinda, I'm getting. That's the vibe. Well, th yeah, they call it a haunted house too. So yeah, um, but I do want to take a second, Brandon. Now, yeah. Now that we talked about that video, which it's a wild video. The other thing too is they're like it's in they were in the middle of nowhere and like literally as they were turning down the road that would take them straight to the Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're not drive past the Walmart. No one's around. Like uh. like if they if they literally just like held it's funny because there was another one that had a, a drone shot yeah. and like they deliberately stopped the shot like a second before they get to the plaza with the Walmart. <laughs> 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 um, but I do want to take a second, Brandon, to read some reviews that I found online. Sure. All right. Um, these reviews I got from, uh, there was one that I got off Yelp and there was one that I got from, uh, a website called, uh, let's see, what is it called? VY Maps. Okay. Um, which I think is just like. It's like just like a, a cache of old reviews because some of these old reviews have been scrubbed, right? Oh, gotcha. Um, so I do also want to point out uh, all these reviews come before the change of ownership. So these I don't think are related to the current owner. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this is what was going on leading up to the closure of the original condemnation of the building. Okay. So these are not current ones. All the current ones are like glowing and high, right? So um, take what you will with that, what that means, whatever. Um, but the ones before the condemnation, so like reasons for why the condemnation happened, this is probably why. <laughs> Just to kind of give you a historical idea. 
Um, so this was November 16th, 2016. I don't know who's giving these reviews, but two of the hotel staff were, were on major drugs and had to be taken to the hospital. Not saying they were not nice, but come on. I also understand having your relatives work for you, but when they're high as a kite, well, ridiculous. No breakfast at all, and the majority of guests left in the middle of the night because a police and ambulance is coming to get the two staff. Money re- refunded, thank goodness. This could have been a great stay, but till they get new staff, don't bother going. I was sad and disappointed in these yo- those young men. Hopefully they are okay, <laughs> but they all but they need the help. They need the, the they will I hope they will get the help they need. Uh-huh. Um So, so that person actually did seem like they were enjoying the event until the whole <laughs> you know yeah, until the until the staff overdosed. the hospitalization. Yeah. yeah, and I want to point out again, not the same staff, as far as I know. So, like, not this is not being held against the current Shanley Hotel, but I think this is fucking hilarious that this is what was happening before it got condemned, and because it's exact, it makes total sense. Yeah. Um. So the next person said, "Pure entertainment value only. If you like being in a building full of smoke and smokers and cheap charo chicks, the Shanley is for you." It's ghost smoke. Um, yeah. So, uh, and that was uh, November 22nd. Uh, November 22nd of 2016. Um, and then the last one, in all caps, HOTEL IS CLOSED. I want everyone to be aware that the hotel closed on Friday, September 17th, 2017, after the building was condemned due to structural issues. The manager of the building failed to notify customers directly, and this was the only this was only communicated through their Facebook fan page. As of right now, their website is still up and accepting reservations. Many customers have not received refunds, including myself. I drove 3.5 hours from Connecticut to find a dark hotel and the manager moving out furniture. <laughs> which is... Uh, checks out. Rough. Uh, and yeah. that was in 2017. So... Uh, and this last one I got off Yelp. I don't have the date for this, but I think it was also, yeah. So this was around the same time as the first one I read. Uh, Brandon and Dan, our ghost leaders are heroin addicts. They were high on heroin, painkillers and pot during our investigation. Uh, two of those things are very different from the third one. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Brandon passed out with a needle in his arm, and Dan passed out on the porch. Three cops arrived, two ambulances. Several heroin bags, needles were found along with pills and pot. Not the vacation I signed up for, and not fun. Cops were very familiar with the hotel and problems. We found that they had overdosed a week prior and are still here. Uh, We left. I urge people to avoid uh, until these drug addicts are gone. It's not safe. Guests should not be exposed to drugs. So, um, (laughs) as far as I know, I haven't seen any... It seems like they've gotten that shit together right because i can't find any recent reviews mentioning heroin use yeah um so that's that's what, that's, that's a, what goes on in the witch's room <laughs> brandon we I don't mean, have evidence satire, to prove that satire 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 satire, 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 satire. satire. um so so yeah no like but uh i think i see why it was condemned yeah in the first place um Still if it like you know like clearly it, Worse than oh, buildings still, that are condemned in the area. It still looks rough. It still looks rough. But if they fix the structural issues or whatever was the condemnation thing, like I guess it makes sense. Yeah. But it looks rough. It, it looks definitely looks rough. rough. It looks rough at the very least. Um. But like you know, it hasn't stopped people from going. People are going to keep going. Nothing we say will do anything about it. And we don't really. I don't really intend to stop people from going. I just want people to know the story. Yeah, it's an um, interesting story. Yes. <laughs> it is a very interesting story. Um, but Brandon, uh, I hope I hope our get our listeners enjoyed this pretty fucking long Halloween episode because it's two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, extra spooky. And we're not just talking. It's extra oh, spooky. I'm gonna, uh, refrain from <clears throat> liable. Anyway. <laughs> well, I don't think we've committed libel. I looked no, I, as I, we were talking. I, I have a lot of jokes I'm holding back. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because I'm sure uh, the staff are very nice people. Yeah, no, like, that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, I, I the other thing, too, is, well, there is one thing that I think is super problematic, right? Um, so, 
that one dude, the the rosy dude, yeah, the, the guy whose daughter died supposedly in the well. And this is this is like a trigger warning for child abuse or CSAM, right? Or CSA. Um, so child sexual abuse. Um, they did accuse the father of molesting his daughter and then murdering him, murdering the daughter, yeah. and throwing her in the well, which is super shitty. Um, don't do that, please. <laughs> like, don't don't just trust a psychic because that's just that's the same kind of shit that the satanic panic has gotten people like families destroyed with. Yeah. Um, I know that the, I know that the dude is probably not alive still, but that doesn't make it okay to like make allegations about that. Right. Um, like, cause like, I'm not even saying necessarily that like Sal lied about anything. He could have fully believed everything that was, that was happening. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I don't see it as being, um, like, like, there's not enough evidence to point to this as being a thing, yeah. right? Um, given the fact that it has such a long tenure and no associated stories that I could find, but, but don't, don't like just make random accusations about somebody doing something that awful to somebody. Like, yeah, it's not cool. Not cool. Also, <laughs> like, th- it, it can cause a lot of harm. These types of things, right? Yeah. Um, but. Regardless, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this podcast episode. Uh, it was a wild one. It was uh, uh, cuckoo bananas. It was pretty cuckoo bananas. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to check out our, our website at CryptopediaCast.com or Instagram at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is also at CryptopediaCast. Uh, if you have anything that you want to say to us, any stories, uh, email us at CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. And uh, Brandon, can you give us a give our jackalopes a thank you? Yeah, thank for this you week's episode? very much to our jackalopes, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Linwood Sharp, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Uh, as always, uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, share it with friends, things along those lines. Maybe not. Maybe this episode, actually. This episode's pretty good. I like this. <laughs> this episode's got some pretty good turns in it. It's got some twists. Um, uh, if you have any requests for monsters or stories, be sure to send them in. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, which I'm amazed you made it this far, um, just keep in mind, we avoid Canadian cryptids unless I choose, unless one of us chooses to do it. We generally avoid them because there's a lot of problems with them. Yeah. Although in the because it's gonna be spooky spooky times, I might. I know I said I was gonna do the Cannibal Botanicals episode next. I yeah. might do a Canadian ghost because I had one. That Let's I've, do a Canadian ghost. I've been pretty excited about it for a while. Let's and I've got some extra stuff to put in the Discord with it, and I, I just want to put it in there. Brandon, let's do. Let's do. Let's pull a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror special and release a Halloween episode in November. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> We'll do it. Uh, uh, let's see. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. I think my story might have the giant gnome statue with a raging erection on it. Um, Does it have it right now? It might. I think I, I put it. It would be. You'd have to scroll back for a bit. Oh, your your not your story. Your your <clears throat> your page. Oh yeah. Sorry, my page. Yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah. I'm like ninety nine percent sure. Because it was really funny driving past it, so we put it up there. Oh, you almost definitely did. Uh, let's see. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. Uh, I'm on Instagram at me2057. My Twitter is at jfdunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are gonna get weird.